it working? I think it's working. Alright, hello everybody. I uh, kickstarted Slayer's Player board game. Obviously, if you know me, you've probably seen me playing this and know how much I love the genre and the card game specifically. They made a board game, so I kickstarted it, got a collector's edition, and it finally showed up. I just feel like uh, opening up and chatting if anybody shows up to chat. If not, that's fine. I'm going to talk to myself and uh, have some fun. So <clears throat> let's see what it's all about. Let me move some things out of the way a little bit here. Make a little bit more space, but we'll figure things out. It'll be extremely unprofessional and low quality and, you know, all the things that you guys know and love. Let me open away from myself with the scissors and not toward myself. That'll be nice. Okay, there's that side. Hey, what's up, Scarab? How you doing, man? Oof. this oh just a piece of covering protective white sheet paper love it all right i need some space oh just kidding i thought it'd be one giant box there's a few boxes all right well here's miscellaneous cardboard box number one. Oh yeah this is the big heavy one ah, here we go Wow, this thing looks gorgeous, man. The colors and the clarity on this box look awesome. Already worth it. <laughs> Already worth it. Okay, do these just pop right off? I think they do, yeah. Yo, I mean, it's not, I mean, I guess technically, but not really. Not what you would think of when you say those words. Um, Slay this player made a board game to go with their card game. And uh, I kickstarted it. And it just showed up. So here we go. Hell yeah, man. And they even just announced Slay this player 2 coming out. So yeah, this does look really cool. Alright, what's the back say? Lots of words and cool things. Alright, here's a low, not focused image of the back. There we go. So it kind of shows a little bit about everything that you got. I got some... Where's my hand? Okay. Yeah, so like the map for the spire itself and character figures and, you know, all sorts of cool shit. A bajillion cards. I'm excited. And time to ruin the value by opening the seal. <laughs> That's okay. I'll still be careful enough about it. Well, didn't I just say open away from myself and here I am opening toward myself? Alright, well, we'll compromise. We'll go horizontal to self. There we go. Okay, I think that's all four sides, if I did it properly. Maybe? I think I missed, I either missed one or I didn't fully get this side. Yeah, I didn't fully get this side. That's fine. I can just rip the plastic right now. <clears throat> okay. Goodbye, plastic. Alright, am I gonna have... There's a little bit of space on this table, but not too much. The box is bigger than my desk pull-out table. It's really on here tight. Oh my god, Magmatic Strip. I only played it that one time, too. I never played it again after that. 
I should take another look at that, or at least watch my own playthrough of it, at the very least. I don't know if I... Jesus, this thing is just airtight, locked in here. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Ah, there we go. That was a really fun game, man. I really did like it, and I thought it was super cool. Um, that was the same one, right? Where, like, they kind of combined or, like, connected the stories between the original series and the X series in a fan-made game like that. I was like, man, that's super cool. I think that was the one. Or was that Mega Man Unlimited? It might have been Mega Man Unlimited that did that. Download link is still available. I'm pretty sure I still, have, like, technically have it downloaded. Because um, I moved it with all my other gaming stuff when I got a new computer in 2017. So... I would imagine it can still work, but... Okay, so there's nothing on the inside of the box, but that's fine. There's enough on the outside. Alright, where can we leave this world? We have to go right there. Oh, yeah. We can hang out, actually. There we go. Yep, hang out right there. Let me scooch. Oh, I forgot about this other box. Yeah, we have two, two boxes. Um, okay. What's in this one? Dope. I got this for $3 at a, uh, like a, a reuse or whatever, Salvation Army type place. Um, I'm just like going through random shirts one day. I saw a DBZ shirt. I'm like, uh, yes, please. Yes, I will buy that. How does this thing open? I, I, this is a weird box. Okay, so it doesn't like actually open, it just lets you slide this stuff out. Yo, what up, Sacred Realm? Come on. Ah, okay. What's this? Board game exclusives. It's got a playmat, heart keys, foil cards, blank cards, a claw pack, and a die. Again, this camera is like 15 years old and not very clear. There's also not enough light in here, but... Yo, what up, Tiger? What else is in here? That was it, huh? Hold on a sec. So you give me a box this size, and you put this in and nothing else? That was, that was the best way to do that? Whatever. Whatever. I'll put this right over here. Okay, here we go. Dude, Sacred, you were right, man. This stuff looks so nice. Rulebook. I honestly don't even know how to play the board game. I never looked at, like, the videos or anything. Um, I figured it won't be that hard because, you know, I play the video game. Holy moly. Oh, good, there's a companion app. That'll be nice. Components. Four possible first encounters, 43 other encounters, 89 summons, 27 elites, 51 events, 36 status cards, 10 days cards, 14 to 20 Neo cards, 112 other small cards, 381 player cards, meaning the character classes, 85 red, 87 green, 85 blue, 85 purple, 17 curse, 22 colorless, four minis, oh dude, I can paint the minis! Yes! Painted minis. Stare at the box first. I know, right? <laughs> I'm just gonna stare at the freaking instruction booklet. Yo! The Silent has a face on here? I don't think they ever showed her face in the video game or anything. I don't think you see any of their faces. Like, that's kind of the point, right? Exclusive board game art. Four player boards, 50 plastic cubes, a die, a boot. Why is there a boot? Like just because of the memes? A merchant mat, HP board, boss cards, ascension reference, 500 sleeves, a whole bunch of divider. Yeah, there's a million pieces in here. Setup. Here's a bunch of words. Setup Act 2 and 3, a bunch more words. 
play area, bunch more words, deck, bunch more words, rewards, map, events, words, words, more words, more words with images that I'm familiar with, but not in this context. Holy crap, dude. Like, honestly, all of these words and images and pictures and, like, charts and instructions make it seem like it's probably super complicated, but then, like, if you have any experience with the game, it's probably not very complicated at all. You know? It's probably just explaining how to play Slay the Spire for people who've never played Slay the Spire, which is weird because if, why are you buying the board game level? That's fine. Specific card interactions. <laughs> So here's all the weird things that don't make sense and you gotta figure out what to do. We'll just include some of them for you. Cool stuff. Yeah, I noticed that strikes and defends are just one each. I'm like, oh, scaling is going to be really weird then. Like, I, it's fine that you don't just, like, cut and paste all the numbers and stuff and play the exact same game. Like, I get that. That's fine. But seeing stuff be one and then upgrade to two, like, huh. As opposed to six and nine. And then obviously everything else is going to have totally different numbers. Or, you know, would they? A regular attack's gonna be two? I haven't looked at a damn thing. I haven't looked at anything. So, unlocks, achievements, achievements. Daily climb, oh that's cool. A board game gives you a method of having a daily climb. Just roll a bunch of D6s, get a bunch of random shit, and then play a run. Do it once a day, all right. <laughs> the golden rule. Whenever a card's text contradicts a rule, the card text takes precedence. Special thanks to the backers for making this possible. God damn it, Jorbs' name is on here. I need to sharpie that shit out. Super cool. Super cool. Alright, you can go sit over here somewhere now. For the moment. Move you where you're visible. There. There. Go right there. I used to be, and then there was one day I go to his stream, and he was having a bad day, I'm guessing, which is, you know, every day for him, but, you know, whatever, it happens. Um... And so he was like, he was trying to do something in the game he was playing. It wasn't Slay the Spire. He was trying to do something. And so he was like talking out loud about what was going on. And he made just like a simple mathematical error. And I pointed it out. I'm like, hey, I think this was supposed to be X instead of Y. And then he made the mathematical error again. And my dumbass decided to mention it again, thinking he didn't see the first time or something. And he just straight up banned me. I'm like, all right, fuck you, I guess. I've been here for a while and, you know, since like early access and helping answer questions and shit and like enjoying my time and learning here. You know, whatever, it's fine. Go be a douchebag all on your own. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched him since or anything that he's played. Even one time I logged in when I, uh, when we had a huge Among Us group and I would watch Hafu play Among Us sometimes. And then one time he was just fucking playing in their group. I'm like, are you serious? So I had to stop watching that. So yeah, not a, uh, not a fan. Right, but just like, it's, I mean, I sort of get it. Because there are obviously so many times where streamers be like, hey, you know, like we get the same question 400 million thousand times. Like it gets annoying answering the same stuff. And then you can't tell if stuff is legit or if it's a troll or whatever. And just like... Chatters are dumb, like they might be saying random dumb shit and just have misinformation all the time and they don't necessarily know any better or they're doing it on purpose. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to 
you know, Cheddar says something and it's messing with my focus and it's a different thing than what I said and so I don't want to have to even like factor that into my brain, like whatever. So like, I get that sometimes, you know, maybe it was getting in, in the way of his focus or, you know, something, whatever, I don't know, but to go straight to that, I'm like, all right, dude, regardless of whether you're right or wrong, like, that's just kind of dumb. So, I'm like, literally just trying to help. And, like, if you go back through chat history, you would have seen absolutely zero troll messages for, you know, whatever the year and a half it was that... Anyway, it's dumb. I don't want to waste any more time on it. It was stupid. And I just don't care. Care anymore. And now there's like... Plus at the time, he was... As far as I knew, he was the best Slay the Spire player. So it kind of sucked because I learned so much from watching him. But now there's like five people better that I watch all the time. And obviously you're there too, so... I'm not even missing out. Baylor's so... He's so good and he's so funny. Super exciting. Alright, what was this? I don't even remember what this was I picked up. Okay, upgrades and items reference. So a huge book about a bunch of like relics. Oh cool. Starter deck, all the cards. These remind me of um, the unlimited printing of MTG, the way that they're like super saturated. I mean you're like if you compare like a fourth edition card to a third edition card. The colors are just like super intense on the third edition card. That's what this looks like right here. It's just like super deep. I'm like too colorful. It looks just like MTG's Unlimited. Holy crap. Overall, obviously, it's gorgeous though. Man, this is a. Uh, this might be more than I anticipated. <laughs> might be more than I anticipated. Storage guide. Wait. Oh, sweet. It tells you how to put everything away because there's so many things in the box. So they give you dividers and pouches and stuff. You can save your game? That's funny. Only save at the end of an act after getting a boss reward. That's so cool. So if you don't have time to finish, you can put everything away and play again later. I mean, why would you do that? But... Hmm. <laughs> it's also a video game. Where is that? There. Cool. I'll put that right there. Oh man. Oh, they had a misprint already. It says you can use this sticker. I'm reading a little thing. You can use this sticker to correct the Ascension 7 rules on page 20. So they must have had a small error, and I'm like, well, crap. We've already printed all the things, so I guess we'll just print a little sticker. Okay, here's a uh, sheet with a million tokens. For the map and stuff. Cool. Perforated and will very easily pop out. One of them almost just popped out on me right now. There's a couple of things that are out of place, but I did, you know, flip the box over a few times, you know, shipping. So here's a green key. Defeat a burning elite before combat again. Each player shuffles two somethings into their deck. Random token.
Here's the Merchant's Mat. Pay three gold to remove a card. Something there can go on sale. Common, uncommon, and rares all have their own thing. Cards and potions. Oh, and then it looks like it doubles as like hints or reminder rules on the back as well. Cool. Am I going to learn the rules and play around? Uh, probably not due to lack of space. I mostly just wanted to take everything out. Um, I mean, we flipped through the rulebook a little bit ago. There's a lot of words. I mean, obviously I know how to play the video game. I can't imagine that this is like dramatically different, but I don't think I'm just going to like quickly read everything in 10 minutes and then be like, hey, all right, we'll practice right now. Probably not. I would rather actually just like load up the video game and play a daily run. <laughs> like I would rather do that, I think, at the end. Whoa, these are... Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So the different acts. This is Act 1. So it looks like there's two different maps. Yeah, there's two different maps it looks like. So I'm guessing there's some... Ugh. It looks like there's some things that are always where they are. And then others you fill in randomly. Ah, my allergies are starting to kick in. God, they've been kicking my ass this week. Act 1, Act 2. Where's Act 3 and 4? Whoa, this is hefty, man. Some of these boards, like these are super thick and, and weighty. Like you can tell that there's some, some oomph to them. They're not just flimsy little like board game pieces that are gonna get lost or broken super easily. Like, no, you're you're not gonna misplace that thing. <laughs> the sole survivor of his people. That's cool. So shows you the energy, block, and HP. And just passive. Defect has his orb slots. Lightning still deals damage end of turn. And with evoke. Frost is still the same end of turn and evoke. Dark. Ooh, dark is a little bit different. It doesn't say anything end of turn. But evoking it says 3 damage plus 1 for each power in play. How do I determine who it goes to? Huh. Oh, what's the defect thing say? Combat automaton. Which became self-aware. Ancient technology allows the manipulation of orbs. Alright, silent. Deadly Huntress from the Foglands eradicates foes with daggers and poison. Ah, allergies. I'm gonna die. The attention to detail in the orb slots. Yeah, plus that way, like, you know, like, they ha you have to know which one is first, which one is second, which one is third. It, I think it would have been cool if they had three different kinds, just for art purposes. Well, actually, no, I guess that shows two being, you know, empty, and then one being lightning, because that's what he generates by default. So, I mean, I guess that way art... Artistically, it sort of matches up with like his base default, which is fine. But I think it also would have been cool if you just showed one of each. But maybe that would be confusing at first. 
That's fine. Watchers is a little interesting. Because she has the two different stances and then obviously no stance. So you have a cube that you'll move back and forth as you do stuff. Oh, end of turn, take a damage. Oh, that's a way to balance Watcher. Oh, but you know what? That's probably only if you're still in Wrath. But if you were to exit Wrath, I would think then you wouldn't take any damage. Probably. The blind ascetic who's be who has come to evaluate the spire, master of divine stances. Doesn't say anything about divinity stance, but these are cool, man. These are cool. Yeah, it didn't say anything about divinity, at least not on there. So I'll have to look at some of the cards later. Hunt them down. Alright, some random gold coins are out of position here. I don't know where they're supposed to be, but it took a little trip, it seems. Right, here's an HP tracker. Shit, man, this could be used for MTG even. Alright. What to grab next? What is this? It's a playmat of some kind. I hesitate to take it out because I'm not going to be able to get it back in very well. And eh, just roll it up, right? Okay. So it's a small little playmat. Nothing I'd be able to use for a different game or anything. But... Um, so this would just be where you keep the cards for various things. So when it comes time to draw a thing, you draw the thing. Just a way to uh, have cards sit somewhere. It feels really nice though. It feels like an elite mouse pad. Go back in. Is this a real game? Oh yeah, dude. It just came out. Uh, we kickstarted it and they've just been shipping this week finally. Or I guess technically last week. Some people got theirs on like Saturday, I think. Friday and Saturday. Mine just showed up today. So. And there's playmat. Oops. Playmats for each of the characters. I won't open these just now because we already looked at the pictures on the uh, in the book. So I'll just leave them as they are for now. Man, they look sick though, dude. Okay, my camera doesn't do it justice, but like the clarity on it. Oh yeah, no, th this camera doesn't show you shit. Well, oh, that looks cool as hell. The contrast of the colors is just so crisp. This shit looks awesome, man. Hey, 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 thanks for the reset. I think something happened with um, um, Streamlabs or something, because I haven't had any notifications of any kind come up. Oh, you know, this, um, no, this scene actually doesn't have anything on it, so maybe that's why. Maybe if I would have been on a different scene, there would have been something, but not this one. Bummer. Anyway. Okay, a couple more tokens out of place. Another gel pack. What is this? Oh, this is a, a in-game organizer thing. There you go, to put tokens and crap while you're playing. Huh. Dude, this die? Dude, this, this die, it's huge for a six-sider. 
It's super light, too. I thought this would be heavier with how gigantic it is. It's just like a plywood. Of course, it falls off the table. Five. Good. Five is a good roll. And then, uh... A little random, the boot. I don't know what the boot is for, but we have ourselves a boot. Oh, here we go. This is the merchant's pouch. That's the symbol, the, the money symbol in this game. Oof. That's why it's heavy. Literally got coins in it. I mean, which makes sense. It's the merchant's pouch. Of course they would use a boot for that. So, I'm guessing those are pennies. Or ones. Just generic coin. And then, uh, five. Ha! So... Cool. You're the one dude who commented and watched my first Breath of the Fire. I mean, there were like a few hundred of those people. <laughs> but no, I tend to at least recognize names. So, are they metal? Oh yeah, these are metal. You can hear them clink clanking around. They're they're heavy. They're real. I don't know what kind of metal, but they're legit. The newest one. See, I mean, I knew what you meant. It was just funny the way it was phrased. <laughs> um, did you finish both of them yet, or or no? No. Yeah, there was. Yeah, somebody just commented on the, the endings a couple days ago, or last week, or whatever. That was probably you then. Another token that's out of place. A whole bunch of random cubes, which I'm guessing you use to like mark positions of stuff on the boards. Like your HP, and block, and energy and stuff. Yeah. Plastic cubes. Another divider piece. Um, I should find a way to organize these so that I don't forget how to put everything back in the box, because that I am absolutely not going to be able to properly do. Do you guys hear any music either? Because I've got some music going on lightly. I just heard the Doom Eternal music pop on. Okay. I don't know if it's too loud or anything. If you want me to turn it down, I will. Here's your save game bag. Good volume? Okay. Here's the minis. Hell yeah. First we got our defect boy. Or, I mean, I guess technically that's not a thing. He's a robot. It's a robot. So... Yeah, so the camera sucks, but you can at least tell enough that there's detail on him. You just can't see it very well on the camera because the camera is shit. Here's the blue boy, or fuck, I did it again. Silent. Yeah, you, God, you can't see any detail on this camera at all. You can barely even see that her knife is a curved Chris. Got that like dead space health pack going all the way down to the ground there. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that somewhere. I think that was when you were AFK for a minute. Um, I did see that mention. Uh, I think we even left it out over here. Yeah, I even left it underneath a couple of things on, the, on my desk. How to put everything away. All right, here's Iron Chad. 
Looks just like the Barbarian from Hero Quest, I swear to God. It's his freaking Buster Sword. You can't see a damn bit of detail on the camera, but it's there. I mean, God, maybe they, maybe these don't even need to be painted. They're already colored to the character. Painting it might be tough, because you'd probably have to spray the whole thing with like a white primer and then start over. And I mean, you would never get them looking, looking like that, you know? You'd have to be one hell of a painter to be able to do that. So it might not be worth painting these. Yeah, like... Are, are we getting that that kind of detail? Somebody, somebody with skill, maybe. But that person is not anybody in my family. She otherwise looks pretty cool, though. I don't really know what she's doing with all this staff and everything, but she's pretty cool. I'm glad none of this stuff is broken. Um, it's not... It's not very flimsy. There's a little bit of motion on one of the ribbons. But everything, like... I'm not... Yeah, I'm not concerned about it, like, breaking or snapping or anything. Like, some games, when they have, like, small, thin pieces on their stuff, they just pop off. Like immediately. These actually should be fine. Sweet. Oh, and then now there's just like five million, you can see it, just a million cards. Eh, there. Just a bajillion cards now to open up, man. What are these? Oh, okay bags with the logos you can put all the individual character stuff on there what do we want to open first it says summon but then it has the boss maybe that's like the event where you hey what's up lamberto welcome where is that one from I guess your own. Badass. Just joined thoughts so far. Everything looks amazing. Um, the quality of this 15 year old garbage ass webcam doesn't do it justice. But like the colors on this stuff and the contrast that they have, everything pops real nice. Everything looks super crisp. Um, everything feels like hefty and like sturdy and full of weight and like strength. Like I'm not, I have zero concerns of anything getting damaged or hurt or lost or broken or anything um you know legitimate metal coins that could have been currency four thousand years ago somewhere so yeah everything everything looks totally gorgeous and feels great super high quality so, there's there's a lot though <laughs> there, there's a lot in here um, I didn't look at any like videos or trailers or watched any like gameplay or tabletop simulator or anything like that. So there's there's a lot more than I anticipated there being. But that's fine. Hopefully it won't be too bad. So some random cards. Looks like these are all just different bosses. Boss, 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 boss. Why are they split up? Huh. Oh, that's phase two even. Spoilers. Yeah, time meter. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, different bosses for different acts. It's weird that it says summon on here. It doesn't say... Yeah, so some of them say summon at the top. And then some of them actually give you the act where you fight them. That's interesting. Oh, wait, what? Huh. I guess it makes sense if phase two is a summon. It's 
strange. So why would Donu and Deka not be like... Place Deka to the left of Donu. I feel like that's just like a weird distinction to have one of them be the Act 3 boss and one of them say Summon, but they go together at the same time. You know, Phase 2, that's fine. I get that. Whatever. No big deal. Oh, wait. Some of these have dice on them? Some of them have, have dice marker in the corner. Um, so maybe you, like, roll to see what your boss is? All right. So excited to get it. The sleeves? I don't even know where they are in here yet. I'm still just barely now getting to things. Um, let's go take a look. Okay, so here's some sleeves. Maybe? Nope, this is starter decks. Here's some sleeves. Okay. Uh, oh, here's a bunch of sleeves. Holy moly. Okay, let's take out one. Um, for comparison, I'll just pull out a random Magic the Gathering Dragon Shield. So yeah, like there's they, pretty much the same amount of protection and resistance. Uh, yeah, exact same size as a standard Dragon Shield sleeve. Exact same size. Yeah, it, they're they're literally just Dragon Shield, which obviously is a good thing. Totally fine. Where's um, a magic card? Here we go. Boom. <laughs> there. Let me just sleeve the forest in one. Yeah, they don't they don't fly out. Yeah, legit. Okay, well, if all of these are sleeves, that cleans up a little bit of this space then, huh? Yeah, it looks like this whole, both of these two sections are just sleeves. So that's, that's cool. It's a lot of stuff I don't have to look at exactly just yet. Ironically, yeah, the back of these sleeves is like the most bland of any of the art on this stuff yet. Like it doesn't have, how do I describe it? Um, granted, what you see on camera is not nearly as good as real vision. Um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It just feels like more flat on the sleeve. These are technically the, the worst looking things that we've opened yet. <laughs> it just, it feels like it, like it's a copy, if that makes sense. Like you take a document or whatever, and then you make a quick photocopy of it and you look at them side by side. One of them you can just tell was just like quickly scanned off. And one you can tell is the original. These just look a little flat. Obviously it's still fine. It's just everything else pops at you. and has so much, so much saturation and contrast. This doesn't feel like it has as much of a, you know, it doesn't come out and get you. But obviously they're still completely great. Does this not look like an unlimited MTG card? Blue Elemental Blast? Ah, oh, I wish this camera would be better. But just the saturation makes the color so deep and robust. It's totally just like an unlimited MTG printing. Vault Plus. The, having the plastic on with a bad camera doesn't help either, and bad lighting and bad everything. I mean, I don't need to open every single card, do I? Wait, what are these? I don't know what these are. I'm gonna leave them there. 
Oh, the Neo bonuses. <gasps> Don't open until you unlock stuff. So we won't open that. We'll leave that there. So the Neo bonuses are slightly different. Gain three, is that three money or three cards? I don't know, and then choose an option below. Upgrade, remove, or gain 10 gold, lose two HP. That sounds really good. Let's take a look at some of these Neo bonuses. Okay, so all of them start with that. Yeah, you know, all of them start with the same gain three, whatever that symbol is. And then, oh, okay, no, yeah, those are different. I thought they were going to say two of them were both gain money and lose something, but. I like how his, his words change. Sometimes it's I've brought you back, sometimes it's another try. Sometimes it's risk reward. Focus, please. Focus. It's not focusing. There we go. I don't know what that symbol is that you gain three of, but you can gain three of it. Maybe potions? Gain five something. Oh, is that three gold and a card? And then that's gain five gold and a card, maybe? Yeah, the symbol is gold. Um, maybe it's also a card reward. You start with a card. Maybe it's random. I don't know. I'll have to obviously read. So there we go. Okay, not all of them say upgrade is the top option. Just half of them. Eh, not half. I happened to look at three out of the first five and I'll set it, but... Does blue still lead to countering and peace? Yeah, blue still leads to you play a different card game than everyone else, and you have you make up your own rules. And they have to just obey whatever you say. Blue has always been like that. It always will be like that. Although, to be fair, I haven't played Magic in like 15 years at this point. When did I last play? Yeah, I want to say the last time I went to tournaments was like 2012, 2010. It was the last time I went to serious tournaments. And I, I played the digital games until like 2015, 2016. But I haven't done anything, not digital or paper, since then. put those back where I found them. Let's put that thing back where it came from. Okay. So here we go. Act, it says Act 1 on there. You know, if all of these are gonna have two different dice on there, maybe they should have given me two dice, not one die. Okay, but what if... So 3, 7, and 11, something happens. Obviously there has to be a way for like all the values of, I don't know, man. Because I can't imagine you're rolling for that stuff all the time, but. This totally looks like the old fashioned, like common Magic Gathering zombie from like 4th edition or unlimited or whatever. Just like, I'm a 2-2 zombie, I regenerate. Well, I guess 1-1 one, one zombie regenerate back then. But... Act 3. I didn't think Chosen was Act 3. I thought he was only Act 2. But... The encounter card denote the outcomes. That's the pop one. Oh, that makes more sense. I am so dumb. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, one and two, three and four, five and six. So whatever you roll, you have your three outcomes. That's, that, duh. 
I was just adding them together for 3711. I'm like, okay, what about the other nine results? <laughs> That's so obvious. Okay. Yeah, obviously if you can't tell, I didn't look at any like trailers or videos or how-tos or gameplay or anything of it. I was like, I heard that this was coming out, I immediately kickstarted it, and then I just, you know, here we are today, it showed up, so. Okay, I've, you know, only got like 2,000 hours in the card game. I figured the board game wouldn't be that bad. Ooh, stop. Don't open until you reach Ascension 1. Cool. And then these must be all the character cards. I see some red. I see some green. Actually, just some red and green. Yeah, and then I see some blue and some purple on here. So there's the character cards. Why are these sorted next to each other? That seems weird. Why are these slots the wrong size? Whatever, I'll just put everything back exactly where I got it. Eh, give me the last thing, okay. Don't open until you unlock Act 4 or reach Ascension 10. Well, I will unlock Act 4 immediately, because if you're not fighting the heart, what are you really doing? Is that it? I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else underneath these. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else underneath these, so... Wait a second. Why did a random emerald key pop out? Where did this come from? I feel like there's supposed to be a bunch of tokens and stuff somewhere. Maybe it is underneath here? How do I only have one key? I thought I was supposed to have a million tokens. Okay, can I lift this up? Nope, yeah, there's nothing else under there. That's weird. That is very weird. Oh, I'm so dumb. All the other tokens are on this thing. Some of them popped out in shipping and like flipping the, the thing up and down. Yeah, I, I totally forgot this was the first thing we grabbed and I set it off to the side. So some of them just popped out and that's why they were loose. Okay. There we go. Oh, some of these have different symbols on the other sides. Maybe not. Okay, it looks like only this row with the monsters does. Yeah. So it shows you the, the node, whether the question mark or a lead or a monster, and then it's clear afterward. Everything else looks the same. Cool. Well, um, outside of uh, opening up all these things and then sleeving the cards, that's everything in here. I take it back. I did not open this package yet. Okay. I forget it. I think this is the collector's edition bonus stuff. I don't actually even know. I 
forget even what it said the collector's edition came with that the other stuff didn't, or the other ones didn't come with. So I'm assuming that's what this was, because this was in its own separate box. Okay. So these keys are a little bit different. Here, let me actually just take them out. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that one is like the cardboard traditional thing and the other one's like a resin. It's a lot beefier. It's a little bit smaller. Um, the artistry on it is definitely cooler. It's got like a textured... I don't know if you can see. <laughs> it, it looks like camera fuzz, but technically that's actually just like a very fine, bumpy texture. And then it's smooth on the other sides where the resin is. Yeah, they both say the same thing, so... These keys are just a little bit fancier. Put that over there. Um, another die, a claw die. Oh, it's a D6, but instead of pips, it's claw marks. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell under this terrible lighting, but that's five. That must be six. Two. Three. Six again, because I'm an idiot. There's the one. There's the four. Okay, cool. Six! All right, so we've rolled each die once, and we got a five and a six. I like these dice. The die is a little huge, though. Like, where's... Do I have my D&D &D dice here? I think my D and D dice are put away. Well, I've got a D twenty and D ten over here, but like, you know, like this D six is the same size, slightly, ever so slightly bigger. Well, partly because of the way squares are versus you know rounding off all of these corners and edges. It's the same size as a D twenty. So these are some chonky D sixes. Um. Okay, a different merchant map. That was the one map that we actually opened and looked at and opened, I thought. Or no, that was a play map. Which I just realized now I put away incorrectly. Let's take this one back out. Okay, so this isn't a merchant map. This is just a play map. Um, did the merchant have a mat on here? Oh, it might be one of these. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. It's not a mat. It's just a cardboard... Well, yeah. A solid cardboard mat as opposed to a mouse pad type roll-away mat. And then this has other information on the back, at least, so... That would allow you to use this and then have the other thing flipped over to see it later. Okay, I need to do a better job of rolling this up. I'm not very proficient at rolling things. That was much better though. Okay. Yeah, that was way better. All right, we got a foil pack. It's got demon form and wraith form on there. This thing is packed to the brim.
Okay. Oh, cool. Hey, here's a new card that's not in the card game. Or the, yeah. Golden Ticket. That's new. Looks like there's two for each color. Here's a foil ascender's vein. You can sort of see the light shining off of it. it they're not very foily. Um, they're only a little foily. They don't, they honestly don't really come off that well because the cards themselves, their color is so saturated and so deep to try and give it some shine. It's like you've already put too much color into it. So these don't hit quite as well as some of the other things so far. I don't, I wonder if that's every character card maybe? I wonder if that's every character card. Because, like, would you want to be able to play with everything being foil or only some things being foil? I'm, they'll probably look a little bit better once they get a, a thin plastic, um, yeah, the, the covering over it. It does tend to help cards shine a little bit better. There's definitely some sleeves you put a card in, it's like, why does the card look better now? <laughs> that is a thing. Um, and then the claw pack. I have no idea what this is. I don't know what's in it. But it's sealed. I think I'm actually just going to leave it sealed. I'll open it later if I ever find out what's supposed to go in there. Someone tell me. Sacred, are you still here? What, what's in the claw pack? Let's put all these things back in here because this was, I think this was the collector's edition thing. Yeah, so if, if this little box with the tokens and the foil cards and the mat, if this was the collector's edition, uh, edition, I think I'm actually slightly, not like disappointed with it, but it doesn't have the same feel and pop as a lot of the, the base stuff. So it is a little sad. Has many of the same card. What? It's like a whole bunch of claws. A little is the kick. Oh, Kickstarter exclusive. Okay. I honestly don't even remember what the collector's edition stuff was. Oh, the coins. Yeah, I thought the playmats were part of it, and playmats are important to me. So I had to get the playmats. And the coins. Oh yeah. So instead of using, yeah, instead of using these little money tokens, you'd use, you know, actual currency. It even has the little hole in them. So in like super, super, super old days when they just barely had metal coins and they started using, you know, metal as currency. Um, it was common to keep your coins, keep your money on a string, you know, like those, like those candy necklaces or whatever, like little rope and then a bunch of like hard candy, like in pieces. Um, yeah, literally like that. And then you would untie the string and you could take off some of your coins, put other coins on, tie the string back. And that was, you know, that was your wallet back in the day. So it's cool that those have that. There we go. Let's open up one of these, man. This ironclad one looks so sick. Man, I wish... I wish I could get the camera to show it as cool as it looks to my eye. Redeem Hydrate? That's fine. I probably owe you one at some point anyway.
Okay. Oof. Yo, this thing is sick, man. It looks so crisp. And the little, uh, the, the gradient as it changes from black to red. Oh, man. Even the back of it just looks like well detailed and put together. Man, the camera doesn't show anything. Yeah, no, the camera just makes me look stupid. Um, I need a new webcam, but it's fine. No, yeah, this thing is this thing is crazy cool. I could legitimately like use this as a mouse pad. It's not as tall, but I don't really go all over the mouse pad like I did when I was younger. So I really do just use it a small area now. I could totally do that. This stuff is sick. Okay, so if I were to sleeve these cards, how the hell would they still fit in here? I mean, I guess in theory, right, all the space of the sleeves would be gone, and then cards would fill them. Maybe you don't sleeve everything. I'm drinking on top of the bottle. <laughs> Everything's still sealed and wrapped in plastic. It's fine. And I'm, I'm careful. But yeah, no, I thought about that. I'm like, eh, everything's literally still sealed in plastic. I, yeah, I know it said it was designed to, so I'm just so used to, not not every game is, and uh, I'm used to taking a sleeved box of stuff and all of a sudden no longer fits. And it's like, damn it, why aren't the boxes bigger? You need to assume people are going to sleeve this shit. Cool. They don't have they don't have tiny sleeves for the small cards. Um, I'll have to grab some of those from my brother. Obviously, they don't have gargantuan sleeves for the you know large cards. I feel like. Yeah, if you're not going to have a large sleeve for a large size card, these should have just been just like, you know, cardboard play, play or pieces instead. You know, maybe not this robust, but they could have made these a little bit more heavy duty then. If there's no way to sleeve them. The sleeves for everything else add on. There was some reason I didn't. I feel like I remember reading that you don't need to sleeve everything, but that they provide sleeves for everything. And I was like, okay, well that's fine. I'll just leave what I need. Um, I mean, my brother has a million sleeves of multiple sizes and kinds, because he collects all sorts of stuff. So I figured worst case scenario, I you know, I literally just take a small stack from him and then voila, like this wouldn't be a problem at all. You borrow a uh, hundred sleeves or whatever. And it just makes me think that because there's not sleeves for that, when you do sleeve them, I don't know where they go then, because then those are going to take up a lot more space that doesn't seem like it's accounted for. You know, meow bonuses, not sleeve. Whatever these are, this is a weird side. What are even are these? Let's open this. Alright, so... They're just like... Some sort of like descriptor cards? Boss relics, relics, potions, the watcher, defect, ironclad, silent. 
They're just like label cards or something. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I probably should go get the add-on. Just because I I would have wanted to sleeve everything. I don't, so I wonder why I didn't. Huh. I must have convinced myself that it wasn't necessary or that, hey, if you don't use the cards, then there's no need. Huh. Maybe I saw something where it's like, we have sleeves for these, but then if you sleeve everything else, it won't fit anymore. Because it's not intended or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I was just trying to save money. Cool. Yeah, these play mats are a clutch, though. Oops, I didn't close this. Yeah, I really like how the uh, the boards, you can see they're indented. So you can take that cube, they give you cubes to, to track stuff with. So the cubes just fall into place there and slide them around to keep track. That's super cool. Although they made this little Ziploc a pain in the ass to open. It could have given me like a normal width instead of like this half a centimeter thing. Yeah, so HP just kind of sits there and easily just move it around. Super cool. Yeah, for sure. I kind of wish the cubes were a little bit bigger though. Like, they don't have to be like a, you know, perfectly fit snug, but a little bit bigger. Well, actually, you know what? Now that I hold a cube next to the slots, I guess what I was hoping for in size isn't really that much of a difference from what they really are. So they could have stood to be a little bit bigger, but looks like it's not as big as a difference as in my brain initially thought. Huh. You can see through them, they're transparent. <laughs> Makes things look colorful. Neat. Alright. Well. Yeah, I mean, the only thing now, I guess, to do is sleeve cards and, and or learn how to play. I should probably read the rules and stuff first. I think Tiger had that suggestion. It's a good suggestion. Okay, how did everything go in here? They gave us a sheet for that.
Hmm. I guess I could actually also... Uh... Pop out a lot of the tokens and then put them in here, assuming everything... I would assume everything fits in here. That could save some space, and I won't have to worry about it anymore. Alright, so how do these get organized then? Alright. There was a picture of it. Alright, so like the money tokens, which side is which? How do I tell which side is which? This is the side with the, okay, so the, yeah, so money goes here, I guess. The money that I'm not going to use because I'm going to use the metal coins. Red cubes go here. I don't know what that thing is, but apparently it goes there. I guess that goes there. I don't know where this goes. Do you tell me on here? No. Oh, there's a page about sleeved cards. Put cards for all four characters, red, green, purple, blue. And the art sleeves with the front showing. Also sleeve the curses, the statuses, and the dazes. At the end of the game, you may unlock additional cards that may need to be sleeved. Okay. So the front of a card has a gray border. Or, uh, sorry, the starter deck cards have a gray border. The cards that you unlock have a black border. And then rares are yellow. So that's pretty cool. Curses, statuses, and dazes you can tell the difference with. Oh, is that what these are? These are dividers? Okay, so you put these in between sections. I think. Maybe? Maybe not. No, the dividers look like they're more full size than that. The dividers are probably in here. Yeah, I was just trying to go based off of this tiny little picture they give you there, but... I feel like that's not every... I mean, it has to be everything, right? No, like, I don't see the shiv tokens in there. It's definitely not everything. Yeah, definitely not everything, but... All right, I'll leave that alone for now, then. I'll leave that alone for now. It is symmetrical, isn't it? No, it's not symmetrical. Yeah, this is... This one has no gap, and this one has... Uh, or, uh, whatever. Never mind, a divider. Okay. Sheesh. so complicated to put everything back where it came from.
That can't be right. There's a lot of extra space here. Something has to be going here. Maybe not. But there's so much space. Well, maybe it's where I put some of like, the coins and the tokens and stuff. Huh? And the dice. And yeah, and the merchant bag. And whatever this bag is. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That was terribly well done. Starter exclusives? No, I think it's. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be for like these coins and, and the merchant bag. So I feel like that's where these were. Because I took a lot of the stuff out and then I took the whole tray out and put the tray to the side. And there's otherwise, yeah, there's no space for it otherwise anywhere else. But here it fits underneath there quite well. Yeah, and so then I just have all the different boards, I guess. And then a sticker for a uh, correction. Yeah, that looks looks correct to me. You know, this would go right here. Maybe it's not 100% correct, but it looks like it's close enough. Everything fits. Yeah. Slowly pushing all the air out. Yeah, it went all the way down. Oh, thunk. Perfect. Super cool. Super cool. Now to open it back up. Surface tension is strong. Ah, there we go. Sweet. Ah, maybe I really should just sit down and read this thing, huh? <laughs> This stupid book looks so cool, man. Oh yeah, it says get the free companion app. Let's go download the companion app. What is this thing called here? I'm just gonna say Slay the Spire Companion. Spire Companion? No. What is it under? The hell is it called? Oh, it's not available yet. There we go then. You just received $5.10 in dividends from DTE. 
Thanks, DTE, for giving me five dollars. What the hell is this terrible music? Katamari Damacy. No wonder I hate it. There we go. FF7 music. Cooperative roguelike deck building adventure. Craft a unique deck, encounter bizarre creatures, discover relics of immense power, and finally become strong enough to defeat the boss at the end of the act. Each player starts with a simple deck that can improve by adding and removing cards. It's also a roguelike, that means... <laughs> that means when you die, and you will die, you start over from the beginning. Take lessons as you learn and try again. Oh yeah, I saw it. I had I had people tagging me all day when it got announced. I think Sacred here was the first one, actually. A couple people in Discord, and then a few hours later my brother, who doesn't even play, but he knows I like the game, so. And then uh, the day after, a couple more friends. Hey, did you see this? I want to see your reaction. Like, bro, we already talked about it. <laughs> Each act takes about 60 to 90 minutes. Man, so this board game really is supposed to take three to five hours to play one run? That's crazy, dude. Like, I understand that the card game, your runs can take two to five hours if you're really pushing for a win rate on Ascension 20. But man, for the board game to take an hour to 90 to an hour and a half per act? We could just watch a video instead of read the book, which I don't even think we can. Like, that is a thing we could do instead. My chair. There we go. Much better. Ironclad and Silent are easier to learn. Defect is harder and Watcher is hardest. I don't know about that. I think Watcher is broken. Keep this in mind when choosing a character. If players defeat the final boss, they win the game. Which boss you consider to be final depends on how many acts you want to play. You can stop play Oh, you can stop playing at the end of any act? So the slime boss can be your final boss? No! <laughs> Who put that rule in there? Needs replacing? Well, it's, uh, it's also brand new. But it is pretty nice. Um, it's super fluffy. It looks like snow. I think it, I think that was like mountain snow was the name of it or some shit. Uh, the cats love ripping it to shreds. Uh, but yeah, it's it's like two years old. It's brand, brand new, quote unquote. Technically, I still owe the carpet company a little bit of money because they were supposed to come out and do something else and uh, There was like a, a two-step Project that was underway. Oh, yeah, they were also going to do a um, backsplash for us So first they had to set up drywall and then they were going to do a backsplash and it took us a while to find something and pick something out or whatever and, um, So they had guys come out and they did all the drywall and then we went back and we finally picked out the backsplash and this and that. And, you know, so it's like it had to get ordered and then once it got ordered it would take a few weeks to arrive and then it would get, you know, installed and all that. So like we picked it out, had all the you know, all the discussion of this and that. So I dropped my credit card on the table right next to the guy, next to his phone, just put it right there. I was like, just pay for all of it at once. Like, I don't care, it's fine. And he pushed my credit card back to me and said, Well, you know, let's let the stuff get in first. Like, don't pay for it until you know, the product arrives, 
and then pay for it, and then we'll, we'll do everything. So I was like, all right. And he said it would take about three weeks to arrive. So I called him four weeks later and was like, what's going on? Oh, you haven't paid me for it yet. By the way, you also still owe me for the drywall that we did. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I threw my credit card on your desk next to you and said, pay for it. And you pushed it back to me. And now four weeks later, after we expected to hear from you a week ago, it nothing's even like we haven't nothing it hasn't been ordered. Nothing. So I just left. Didn't pay for the drywall. Free drywall. <laughs> so, and now it's like, if I want to get like new carpet somewhere else, or you know, get something else done, I can't go back in there ever again, which sucks because it's close, and it seemed like they had good prices and. Like, he did carpets in, like, four different rooms in the house, and that's great. Like, we love everything about it we love. We love everything about it. We had a bunch of extra from, like, the way carpets get cut in rooms to fit and stuff like that. You know, all the extra parts, you know, obviously we got to keep those, and we ended up being able to carpet a lot of the basement with just the extras from the, you know, from the regular, the base floor. So it's just like... I didn't, up until that point, I had nothing, you know, against the, the place or anything, but... Like, bro, I tried to pay for this, and we've been waiting to hear back from you. Just for you to turn around and say that it was my fault? Like, I gave you my credit card and say pay for the whole bloody thing in full up front. And you told me no, so now I walked out. But now it's like, I, I can't go back. <laughs> Which sucks. So... I don't know. Yeah, and it was like over a year later we finally got some like cheap ass peel and stick backsplash instead of something like nice and fancy. And it doesn't even cover the whole thing, it just covers like the main section but not the side well like the main section where the, the stove and oven are, but not like the sides on the countertops. But it's like whatever. Where were we? We were reading a rule book. Oh yeah, whose bright idea was it that said you can end the game at the end of any act? No! You at least have to beat Act 3. I, I can understand if people don't want to go to Act 4, and then like... You know, it changes how you play the game a little bit. Like, is it still a, is it still a win if you beat Act 3 and don't go to Act 4? I would say yeah. You know, personally, I feel like if I get to the heart, I count that as a success. Obviously, it's not a win, but I consider it a success. So. Anyway, I think that's dumb. So, house rule. You're not allowed to end the, end the game after Act 1 or 2. Death. When a player reaches zero HP, they're dead, and the party loses. The whole party loses. If one guy dies, ooh. Ooh. Components. A million cards. Four prismatic shard. Oh, there's a prismatic... Because, yeah, when you get prismatic shard... Like, if you're already the defect, and you get Prismatic Shard, you know, whatever. But if you're a different class, and you get Prismatic Shard, now you get an orb slot. So there's four different Prismatic Shard um, card cutout things, depending on your class, which change what you do and do not get. That's cool. Later, Cordy. Thanks for stopping by, man. Hopefully you got to see or answer any questions that you had that we were able to do something for it. So um, I was just going to read a few pages of the rule book and then we might uh, might even turn it in. Because I don't want to spend God knows how long reading this whole thing just to myself. Um, maybe we'll do the daily run just for fun.
think we'll do that. We'll read a couple pages of rule book until I get bored, and then I think we'll do the daily run and call it. Uh, where were we? Oh, just like looking at all the stuff that comes in here. Set up. Pick a character. Each player chooses a character and takes the figure, board, mini, deck, card rewards, rare cards, shuffle. Take out tokens. Get your player board. Set it all up. Get your deck ready. Take out the following starter deck. Shuffle every deck except for the summons deck, the days deck, and the status deck. Probably because those don't really matter, I suppose. Where were we? Place them in separate piles. Keep the first encounter card separate from the rest of the encounters. Yes, yeah, so you've got first encounter, act one, elites. Act one, act one, relic potion boss, day, status curse. And then it'll be act two. Act 3. Take out the Act 1 board, randomly choose a map. Map tokens. Shuffle the tokens face down. Randomly place dark map tokens on dark map spaces and light map tokens on light map spaces, then flip them face up. Yeah, so that's, remember when we took out the board piece, like some of them are static, like the chest is always going to be right there. You know, there's a random elite, not random, I should say, there's, there's you know, some nodes are always the same, and then some are clear. So that's how you get randomized floors to pick your spire pattern. Oh yeah, and then the boot is essentially your token. That's where you're walking. Cool. Why is it called a meeple? What is a meeple? Place the boot meeple at the bottom of the map. Sure, whatever. Place your character figure on the board in the lowest open space. Reveal the boss. Randomly choose a boss. You can roll the die and use the boss with the matching die result. Keep the player aid board handy as a quick rules reference. When you encounter a merchant, flip the board over and set up the merchant side. Shuffle Neo's Blessing. Each player draws a blessing card, gain the reward in red, and choose one of the three rewards in blue. Then put Neo away. If you're playing solo, also gain two gold and the loaded die solo relic. Oh. Alright. So I guess I can play solo. First encounter, set up for Act 2 and 3. Replace the encounter, elite, question, and whatever else that deck is with decks for the next act. Shuffle all of them except for summons. Only Act 1 has a first encounter deck. I feel like the other acts technically do. Only because there's the distinction between simple and hard encounter. Repeat steps 5 through 9, which was randomly choose a side of the act board, shuffle the map tokens, put the map token things in there, whatever. Uh, then after that you heal. All players heal to max HP at the start of Act 2 and later acts. Shuffle your card reward deck. Include any cards you skipped. Don't shuffle the rares. The 
a loaded die relic. So do you use that every turn then, or what? Maybe we'll find out later if I keep reading. And so it shows you how to put things in place a little bit. Cool, cool, cool. Below is a suggestion for how to organize your play area. Do whatever works for you. Draw pile, discard pile, exhaust pile. Items are small cards. Keep items you gain in front of you. Oh, yeah, so your potions and relics and stuff. Didn't the playmat? Oh yeah, the collector's edition playmats I think had designated spots for that, so you would just use that. When your character takes damage or loses HP, your HP goes down. Yeah. When you heal, your HP goes up. Keep a red cube on your HP to track it. It starts at the highest number on your player board. Damage can be prevented with block. Each character has a unique starting ability. I feel like the block and energy could also have been um, like how we see on the board. There's dividers on the HP, but the uh, block and energy is just a solid trough and it slides freely as opposed to needing to hop. I feel like all of them could have required hopping. I guess you just don't want it to get knocked over and fly to the side, and only HP is safe from that. Oh well. I'm sure they tested both and decided this was better because those numbers move up and down all the time, so... Makes sense. Alright, how to read a card. Energy cost, name, banner, type, and the text. Attacks deal damage, skills block damage and do other useful utility, powers give you abilities that last the entire combat, or passives, curses are bad cards that bloat your deck and they do bad things. They can't be transformed when you gain a curse. Oh, add the top curse card to your deck. Okay. Powerful enemies can weaken your deck by adding statuses and dazes. Remove them from your deck at the end of combat. Energy is used to place cards. You have a max of six at one time. Each character has their own icon, even though they're all the exact same thing. It's fine. You can gain energy from sources with icons that don't match your character. Right, in case you have prismatic shard getting you a different card. It's all just energy. It just gives each character a little bit more color and pizzazz to themselves. X cost. You can spend any amount of energy when playing an X, including zero. It has an effect based on how much you spend. That is one thing I wish Slay the Spider could do. Instead of X being all the rest that you have, being able to customize what you want to spend. Like if I want to spend two, I should be able to spend two and then play a one cost card. But in the video game, it's like, nope. If you want to use it first, then you use all three. 
so because it would be cool there's a lot of stuff a lot of times I feel like it'd be cool to play your X card first and then the rest of your stuff like uh, is it doppelganger the silent card yeah like doppelganger would be cool if it's not upgraded well then it's just gonna be zero No, I mean, that, not a great example. I don't know. It doesn't matter. There's, there's definitely times where I feel like I wish I could use it for two and then play a one-cost card as opposed to playing a one-cost card and then using it for two. There's times where it does make a difference, but oh well. Like if you're trying to set up Pen Nib with Whirlwind or something... can't just play a card or you can't play the the whirlwind for the amount you want if it's already triggered and then play something else after you just have to play the whole thing there we go i thought of one example cards of different rarities which blah 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 Grays are common, blues are uncommon, yellows are rare. There are two copies of all commons. I'm guessing there's one copy of all uncommons then? And probably one copy of all rares. But they're not always available. Items are small cards that you'll collect on your adventure. Here we go, here's the loaded die. When playing solo, start with the loaded die. On a six, it can trigger its own ability or a die relic ability on another relic. Okay, so but that doesn't answer my question. Does it work every turn? Or does it work only on the first turn or what? If it's every turn, that's cool. It's a 50% chance for plus one block. Happy Flower RNG. Instead of every third turn by default, now you roll for it with a 33% chance. So you theoretically could, you know, trigger it again and again and again and get Super Flower, or you could just never get it. I like those odds. I like those odds. Which is weird, because I never like any odds. Several types of rewards! I'm not going to read all this crap. Yet. You start at the bottom encounter of a map. When you're done with the room, move the meeple up the map along one of the paths to the next room. Andrew, you missed it, bro! We opened all the shit! I was just uh, gonna read a handful of pages of the rulebook and then do a daily and then end stream, but now that you're here, maybe we take everything all out again. <laughs> no, I, I should probably do that for you. Not on stream, but just separately. So we'll do that in a little bit then. I'm just going to read a few more pages and then be done. And then I'll just give you a video call. The most disgusting. I don't think you understand how disgusting my current run is. I literally have infinite snow and infinite damage on the entire board. Like, okay. Everything is just dead as soon as I decide to make it dead. <laughs> and I'm holding back, too. I'm not playing all my stuff, because I don't want to have to fight this deck again later. <laughs> Repeatedly use Sunrod on the Frost Guardian?
Like you sun rotted the enemy to hit you? What? How did that work? What, what did you do that you made him want to act? Was it like knockback or something? Or not, not knockback, smackback? So you'd smack him back with like shrooms and then you... What, do you heal up with heart mist station or some shit? You give a shroom my 15 scratch. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So he's just bopping himself. <laughs> that's funny. It's so funny. Yeah, my, my current deck is so busted. It would be able to win the Vanquish fight with 999 HP on all the enemies. Like, no problem. It's that busted. Yeah, I can deal 6,000 damage. And it's all set up during crown phase, because I have so many crowns. It's disgusting. It's absolutely not okay. That's funny. It's definitely cool playing with uh, without all the unlocks. Because I feel like there's some things that I'm getting literally every run. Like I'm getting the snow charm every run. I'm getting the stupid moose charm every run. I don't even like that one very much, but I'm still getting it. Um, I'm getting some companions multiple times. <laughs> no, you don't need to. I mean, it, it plays mostly like the regular game. There's just so many words. But we're, we're, we're skimming through it a little bit. Merchant! Place three relics and three potions on the merchant board in the indicated slots. Each player reveals blah 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 blah. You can use gold to do stuff, buy stuff, do stuff, remove stuff. Boss! There is one thing I don't like. It says winning and losing. If a player defeats the final boss, they win the game. Which boss you consider to be final depends on how many acts you want to play. You can stop playing the game at the end of any act. Can you imagine? You beat the slime boss and then it's like, congratulations, you slayed the spire, bro. Like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Give me a break. So no, I'm, I'm automatically house ruling. The game is not over until you do all three acts. Um, unfortunately, it does also say that uh, each act takes an hour to an hour and a half. So they're basically telling you that, hey, this game is going to take three to five hours. Woof. I'm assuming so. Yeah, it's mentioned act four a couple of times, but any of the cards related to Act 4 stuff was all sealed. So like, I got to look at the keys. Like, I've got keys. So there's there's definitely an Act 4 stuff. It's just, uh, it's locked. So I can't see it right now. They even have a built-in uh, daily run version for this. You roll a die six times to give yourself like six different randomized things, and then it's like, here's your daily ver your, your daily run. We won't play so much. I mean, not if you don't show up, dude. You have to actually come down here for us to play. I guess technically no. I, we could actually play this over webcam. It is possible. I mean, it's just a board game. You know, I, I wouldn't suggest trying to play with more than just the two of us, but it would be possible. Yeah, I mean, it, granted I would need a, a better webcam with a better angle, but uh, there's no reason that it wouldn't be able to work. For two people that are familiar with 
how everything works, yeah. There's a solo play anyway, so you know what? I'll just beat the game myself and mark up all the things and I'll check off all the boxes and I'll use all the stickers. No, I'm not gonna touch anybody. I mean, I'll, I'll play on my own a couple of times, I'm sure, but I don't want to make any permanent things until you get to, you get your hands on it. Where were we? Over here. Combat setup. Each player has a row. Enemies are placed in rows. Summons, blah, blah, blah. Random summons, blah, blah, blah. Encounter setup. Oh! Okay, so earlier... Where was it? Yeah, so earlier on the map board, if you can see, there's... There's like four little circles on the side. And it says, you know, when you're setting up, place your character on the lowest one. And obviously if you're up, up to four players, then everyone's placing their thing somewhere. And I was like, well, that's weird. Like, you don't move around. What's the point? Um, and now here, in the encounter setup, it shows each spot determines who your enemy is. So when you're playing multiplayer, it's not just like a stronger enemy, like in the video game. It's, uh, every person fights their own monster. So that's cool. Yeah, and so, granted this camera is terrible. But there's six results here. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. And depending on what you roll, depends on what he does. So. Neat. Put a cube on numbers with the yellow outlines. Ah, so there's no RNG for monster HP. You can attack and block for each other. I was going to say, there's going to have to be some sort of co-op things and not just everybody just playing the thing at the same time. You know, being able to fight for each other is pretty cool. Which, honestly, that seems like a so much of a better way to do it that maybe Slay the Spire 2 will do it this way, the way the board game is. If they even have a co-op mode, of course, I'm assuming they're gonna I'm assuming they're gonna make a co-op mode. And I think that would be a better way of doing it rather than the way that Spire with Friends works. Special abilities, blah blah blah. Elites, elites with summons, bosses, HPs. Combat round. Combat rounds consist of a player turn followed by an enemy turn. Repeat until end. Shuffle your deck before combat starts. There's one shared player turn that's broken into the phases below. Start of turn, play, end of turn. Easy enough. Oh, you're still not going to be able to see very clearly because this webcam is from like 2010 bro like the 2007 one had at least a focus knob on it so you know all those old videos you could like see it like zoom in and out now this one just auto does it and it's just not good uh, where were we start of turn shuffle and set energy to three and block to zero Draw five cards, no max hand size. Oh my god. Infinites are so easy with no max hand size. Dropkick with vulnerable, please. Uh, imagine just spamming like six offerings and then you just play dropkick <laughs> forever because you drew 40 cards. <laughs> 
That's funny. Uh, when your draw pile is empty, you need to draw. Your discard pile becomes the new draw pile. Shuffle it. If a card was just played that drew you cards, that card is set aside when you shuffle and then added to the new discard pile. Yep, same thing. Roll the die. If any abilities can change the die result, they must be used now before resolving other abilities. The die result tells you what action some monsters will take later during the enemy turn and which relic abilities are about to trigger. Are you still here? Like, did you turn off mobile while you're setting up PC or no? I think the answer to that was yes. Oh, you can hear you? Okay. Um, I was just going to say, I don't know if you can see, but with, like, Happy Flower, for example, instead of an energy every three turns, um, when you roll the die at the start of a turn, if you roll a three or a four, you gain the energy. So, like, you could potentially just roll a bunch of three or fours in a row and get energy every turn. So... Happy Flower RNG could be godly. And like, even if you don't get Happy Flower to trigger during a fight, like, it's not really the end of the world, because that means all you technically lost from the video game version would be one energy anyway, on one turn. And like, all the other turns, it's like, it's normal. I just feel like there's so much more upside if you get to roll it, you know? Combats generally aren't that long, so it's not like you're going to be going five, six turns and get no energy. And technically, depending on when the fight started, it could be mathematically correct to be five turns in and only have gotten one energy so far anyway. So like, yeah, RNG Happy Flower just sounds way better. Anyway, uh, where were we? Start of turn abilities. The following abilities trigger in any order the players choose. Abilities that have start of turn or start of round text. So I guess like... Um, like if you have Bag of Marbles and Red Mask against people with an artifact charge, you could choose which one goes first. Um, cool. Or like... Mutagens with Clockwork Souvenir with... Actually, no, yeah, it, it just depends. If you get the artifact first, then you keep the strength. If you get the artifact second, you keep it at end of turn, but not immediately. So the timing of it potentially changes what you get. Um, okay. Abilities that have start of turn or start of round. Start of combat, trigger on the first turn of combat. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Start of turn is each turn or round. Start of combat is only on turn one. And then die relic abilities. Yeah, it still isn't. hasn't been totally clear. Do you roll for the... Okay, no, no, I get it now. So there's a bonus relic. Yeah, unlimited hand side is crazy. There's a bonus relic if you're playing solo called Loaded Dice. Granted, it's upside down for you. Where is it? There. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Sorry, I couldn't hold it there any longer. <coughs> Um, if you're playing solo, loaded die, if you roll a 4 or a 5, you get a free block. If you roll a 6, then you get to trigger any die relic ability of other relics that you choose, which could even just be loaded die if it's free block. And so I was confused. I was like, do you just roll that every turn? Or like, how do you know what you're doing here? But now this explains it, this combat round. At the start of turn, you reset your energy, 
you draw your cards, and you roll the die. So that would trigger for all of those dice-related relics, yeah. Dude, what if there was a Sneko Eye? How would, how would you do it? Like, you could still draw extra cards, but then randomizing the cost of them would be weird. Like, you are technically rolling a die, but they wouldn't make you roll the die for all the cards. Because you're rolling the die once for relics and, and uh, monster intent. There definitely won't be a runic dome either, though. <laughs> no free energy for monster intent removal. I mean, maybe, I guess you could do that if it had, like, a separate deck with it, but that's too advanced for one relic. Yeah, I, I thought about that, actually. Yeah, cover up the card. But then, I mean, you still, like... You still have to look at it and be like, what did he do? Oh, he did this. And then, you like, you see them. And you can't unsee them. Or, like, you know, oh, I roll a 1, this monster does this, whether, you know... Which I guess is kind of the same. Like, if you know their pattern, if they have... Some monsters have a pattern, some don't. You know, then I guess you do know at the... Potentially you know at the start of your turn anyway. There is an app. Um, it's not out on the store yet, but it does say get the free companion app. It's got a rule book, a soundtrack, a library, achievement tracking, and more. Um, it's not out yet, though. A digital version of the board game. <laughs> That's like how there's a board game for uh, Queen's Gambit. Play the Queen's Gambit board game! The board game based on the show, based on the board game. What? <laughs> you mean chess? Can I... How is... What? <laughs> Where were we? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so you trigger all the start of this, start of that, trigger the dice result stuff. Play. Players can play cards, use potions, and activate abilities in any order they choose. Players can discuss strategy, such as which enemies to attack and which players need help. It is encouraged to it. Ah. It's encouraged to announce if you have weak or vulnerable effects early in the turn, as well as ask questions like, how much damage do you have? Do you have enough block? Rather than look at a player's hand. Okay, yeah, that's so cool. Dude, that's so cool. That is such a better co-op style than the video game co-op. It's so much better. If only the numbers were the exact same, this would be a better game. <laughs> Pay the energy cost on the upper left, track the energy on your board. Oh, something I mentioned, and I'll, I'll show you later tonight. Um, a lot of the cards and stuff, they look like the unlimited set of Magic the Gathering. And I, I hope that you know what I mean. Like You're the only one I would expect that would know what I mean if I say that. The cards look like they're from the set unlimited, as opposed to like... Um, fourth edition or you know whatever random edition unlimited had the very specific look of their card no just like the way that like like the god what was the word not contrast saturation like the saturation of the cards the color just like it's too intense and it pops out at you it's just it's so much more vibrant and like in your face of color. It's very loud. Only Unlimited did the Alpha Beta didn't. All of the borders were different. Some of the text was different. And then once they finally got to fourth edition and beyond, everything started looking the same until they decided to mess with the formula. But Unlimited cards specifically, like, are kind of sharp. Anyway, the cards in here look like that. I was like, man, if I say this, no one's going to know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway. Uh, 
Um, pay the energy, make decisions and choose targets. You can target any enemy with your effects. Effects with a whatever that symbol is affect all enemies in one row and always affect the boss. Oh yeah, so AoE would be just the row, but not necessarily all four rows? Interesting. There is a digital version of the Slay the Spire board game? You mean on like Tabletop Simulator? Because... Or do you mean something else? Like, I can't, could I actually go on Steam and be like, Slay the Spire board game. I'm going to do it. Oh, a mod. All right, we're, we're, we're going to Steam here really quick. Where's my keyboard? Oh my god, my keyboard's all the way over here. Uh, Slay the Spire. Workshop. Wait, I know library, not store. Library, I'm so dumb. Workshop. All right, what if I type in board game? I'm going to type in board and search. Oh my god, dude. Hey, wait, wait a second, Viper. You made it. <laughs> that dirty self-promotion. Video game adaptation of the board game of the adaptation of the video game. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm doing it. Okay, this is so cool. That is so cool that not only did you just show up right after that comment, well, maybe not show up right after necessarily, but the fact that that comment happened and you, the creator of it, happened to be there and be like, by the way, that is awesome. Well, there you go, Andrew. We can play that later. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yep, installed. It's fine. What a flex, man. What a flex. Hey, so maybe you can answer the question. Effects with the explosion symbol affect all enemies in one row. Okay. Never mind. Oh, I wasn't... Yeah, I didn't mean that we would multiplayer it. Just that we would, like, play it simultaneously or, or screen share. Two players, one game kind of thing. Two players, one controller, that's what I meant. Yeah, if you say it only works solo, then I'm only going to do it solo. I wouldn't fuck around. <clears throat> Especially if the author of the mod is telling us this. Hell, I'm not going to argue against you. Are you kidding? That'd be stupid. While a card is being played, it isn't in your hand or in your discard pile. Execute printed effects top to bottom, blah, 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 blah. Clean up. Do things, play game, end of turn abilities, end of turn triggers, discard all cards in your hand in any order. Okay. Enemy turn, remove enemy block, enemy does action, and then move cubes. Enemies lo lose all of their leftover block tokens at the start of the turn. Starting with the highest row, they act left to right, taking one action each. And then all enemies in the next row act left to right, and then down and then left to right, blah, 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 blah. Bosses always act last. Bosses always act last. I was thinking of Reptomancer, but she's not a boss. She's an elite. Oh, no, the, um... What's his name? The Hyper Beam guy. He technically can act second if both of the orb dudes are still alive. So that is a very, 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 very minor change if bosses always act last.
In this game, he only summons one per player. Well, I just meant in the I just meant in the video game. I don't. How are we supposed to distinguish between them now? The real game, the digital game, the card game, like the OG. Um, you know, slay the player versus slay the player board game. I don't know. Um, I was just thinking in terms of that, like. Why do we feel the need to stipulate bosses act last? Because I was trying to think, like, does this even happen? Does that ever even come up? And that is the only exception, yeah, that could come up. So, but I feel like you could just, you know, craft him differently, and then you don't even have to specify an extra rule. But whatever, no big deal, it doesn't matter. I'm just autistic and I wanted to go crazy about it. Think way too hard for no reason. Um, enemy action types. They target the player in their row. Oh, enemy AoE hits all A. Enemy AoE is way better than player AoE. Not fair. Three types of enemy behavior. Single action, they just take that single action every turn. A die action, you roll the die and you do the thing. Or a cube action. At the start of combat, place a cube in the cube slot. The enemy takes the action to the right. Oh, and then it moves down once per turn. And then... Oh, and then it just cycles from the red ones. Okay. That makes sense. Enemies are zero, they are dead, they lose their tokens. Flip them over. If a player dies, the game immediately ends in defeat. I feel like that might be a little harsh. I do kind of like that there's a resurrect feature in the co-op mods, even though those are unofficial. Um, you know, at least give like one chance per person, or maybe, I don't know, maybe one chance for everybody overall, or one chance per player, or even just one of them, I think, use the, the strategy that you would get like permanent penalties that made everyone's game more difficult when you got to keep playing. Oh, optional rule for that. Okay, cool. I may look at that. I don't know. I generally try and play things as written. Although I'm already going to house rule the rule where it said that you can end the game at the end of any act. That's house rule. You gotta beat Act 3. You don't have to necessarily beat Act 4, but you gotta beat Act 3. Um, end of combat. Combat ends when all monsters are dead or they have left. Unless an enemy has an on-death ability that's going to summon an enemy. <laughs> Abilities that say end of combat trigger now. Players gain rewards based on things. Return your powers, discard pile, exhaust pile, remove curses, remove statuses, not curses, remove statuses and dazes, that's what I meant. Um, reset the player board, block and energy, lose all the combat related tokens. Defect removes orbs, watcher goes to neutral. Players may switch rows anytime between now and the next combat. Oh, that's so cool. That's cool. So it's not, you know, player one's not always on the bottom row. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's not... Would monsters always spawn in the same spot? Or, or like, if monsters get randomly divvied up, it might not necessarily matter. But... Uh, looks like after, at the end of combat. Or I should say between combat. Players can switch between combat anytime. I wonder if there's an event that's like the person in the third row gets this. I will right, put me in the third row then. There's a reason why I imagine. Yeah, I mean, so I'll, I'll mention. I mentioned it at the start when the game went out on Kickstarter. Obviously, I just kickstarted everything. I didn't look at any videos of like the rules or the gameplay. I didn't look at any tabletop sim of like people playing it or anything like that. So like I you know, legitimately don't know anything about the game in terms of, like, how it goes or how it's played, other than I know how to play Slay the Spire. Um, 
I just I just didn't feel the need to, to look at any of that stuff. Like I'm gonna love the game and I'm gonna play it. So like I don't care. Um, so this is just like me thinking out loud of like what could happen or what would potentially be a thing or you know how would this work in the other game? You know blah 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 this and that. So that's just one of my thoughts. Is maybe there's events or something that base on the roll or the the row or maybe there is some sort of pattern to which enemy types go in which slots and then you can build your deck accordingly and like you know give yourself an advantage maybe that's a thing i don't know spoiled well i appreciate you not spoiling it um so that's cool maybe one day i'll figure it out i'm sure we will <laughs> 2,000 hours in Slayer's Player means I feel like I should be able to figure out everything. <laughs> Actions and effects. Most icons are explained in the back of the rulebook where the player A. Below are some examples of what symbols mean on the player cards or enemy actions. Damage. Deal one damage, deal one damage. Deal two damage and then get vulnerable. Deal three damage to all enemies in the row and the boss. Put a poison and weaken token on all enemies in the row and the boss in the present. Oh, huh, okay. I mean, uh, it's just doing the exact stuff that it says. When an enemy gains strength or block, it always goes on the enemy, never on you. Oh, okay, yeah. So an enemy flips a card that says two attack, one block. Two attack, one strength. Of course it's not going to go on you. Deal two damage to the player in this row. Blah, 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 blah. Multiple hits on the same card, like Twin Strike. Some card. Oh, I did really like Andrew. I don't know if you were here. There's a new rule for the X cards, or at least my interpretation of when I read it. It said you can pick how much X is. It doesn't just use everything that you have left. I really, 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 really like that change, and I kind of wish that that was the way that it worked normally. In case you want to use your X card first and not use all of it. You can play something after it. Yeah, I really like that. So that's cool. Hopefully Slayer's Player 2 does that. Some cards say deal X for each, like Finisher or Barrage. Some enemy actions and multiple hits. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Because you're always just like dragging, drag and drop you know, click and release the cards. So then how would you do that? You'd have to literally manually enter in a value and hit enter or something. Or maybe it could give you like a little bar and then you click the number that you want and click OK. I mean, there are cards where it like pops up. Yeah, like, what's an example? Like, that. Uh, what's that great discovery? You know, cards pop up and then a bunch of stuff where you're scrying and then like, things happen and you click the thing and you confirm it. So really it wouldn't be any different than that. How many energy do you want to use? Zero, one, two, three, you know, up to however many you have, and then you click it and you confirm it. That's all it would have to be. Here you go. Yeah, right now a little screen pops up with the energy on it. It's painful. It doesn't sound that bad. It sounds literally just like any of the scry or card reward effects. Something that you do all the time and never think about. Oh, painful to implement. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that'd be a neat feature. Maybe, they, maybe they'll be as good as you are when they make Slay Player 2, huh? <laughs> uh, vulnerable is double. Well, yeah, when everything is one damage or two damage, you know, 
Yeah, vulnerable has to just be double in this game. So weaken is probably what half rounded up then. So vulnerable is extra good. Players can target any enemy. Enemies target the player in their row. Enemy explosion actions target all players. Not fair. Some bosses have different modes like the Guardian. They can only use action and abilities from the mode they're currently in, whether it's attack mode or defensive mode. Yep, we know how the Guardian works. I can't believe I'm reading this much of it. I thought we really just would read a few pages and then do the daily run and then like leave. Ironclad. The def Why is the defect second? Why is the defect second? I, get, I mean, visually, I suppose, left to right, but, like, this is the page, and then this is the page. So Silent is kind of placed third here. It reminds me of Final Fantasy 1, and Final Fantasy 6, for that matter. When you organize your party in 1, 2, 3, 4, but it's technically 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's like... Sometimes, like, you make your party really quick, and like, wait a second, that's not the right order. <laughs> Literally, FF1 style. Alright, defect, channel, evoke. How are orbs different from the video? Do I have to evoke the front orb? Do orbs rotate? Do I have to channel orbs into a particular slot? No, no, and no. Holy crap. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Do I have to evoke the front orb? Do they rotate in the video game, like in the video game? Do I have to channel them into any particular slot? No, no, and no. You can channel an orb into any empty slot. You can evoke any orb. That's really cool. That's super cool. Dude, that makes... Well, in the video game, that would make Darkness Orbs way better. Imagine you leave it in the front slot to, like, get the boosted growth. Does it Does it grow more? No, that's only if you have, like, loop or, uh... Gold-plated cables. Never mind. It's not actually boosted. But yeah. Runic Pyramid for your orbs. That's freaking sweet. Runic Pyramid for your orbs. Dual Caster gets so much better than two. Like, oh man, I've got a Frost Orb in front, but I need to deal 10 damage to something. And then my Lightning Orb is next. Well, board game, you're just like, pow pow! Right, they are a little different here, but I'm just thinking of the mechanic, you know. I'm reading this and be like, hey, this is different. What if this mechanic was real? How would that change? That's a huge change. I wonder how much of this Slay the Spider 2 is going to implement. Place a poison token on them. They lose one HP per token they have. Don't remove poison tokens until they are dead. So it doesn't lose and like, what's the term for it? Like decelerate poison. They just stay at a static amount or go up. Everything sounds buffed. <laughs> Everything sounds buffed. Shivs are tokens that may be used to deal one damage whenever you could play a card. Treated as a separate attack and affected separately by strength. Vulnerable and weakness. 
You start combat with zero shivs, and you gain shivs from cards with the shiv icon. They don't go away until used or... Wait, whoa. They don't go away until used or at the end of combat? You can use them immediately or save them up? Yo, shivs are so good! No, you start with zero shiv tokens. But if you play a blade dance, just, you know, whatever, you get three shiv tokens, they stay there. So you don't have to use them that turn. You can use them next turn or next combat. If you're out of shiv tokens and you gain a shiv, you can deal shiv damage immediately or skip gaining the shiv. Dude, shivs are so good! Holy crap! I love this board game, man. Retain- yeah, and infinite hand size? I love this board game already, dude. Alright, Watcher. Okay, so hold on. Let's go back to the Ironclad. I just kind of skimmed over the Ironclad. Max strength of 8, plus 1 for each strength token. Normal. He can exhaust cards. Okay. Extra HP. There we go. He starts with more HP. Than, that's, it, that's it. That's all the Ironclad has is more HP. So the defects quote-unquote buff is that when you evoke an orb you can evoke an orb of your choice if you channel an orb and your orb slots are full you can evoke any orb you feel like and then you place the channeled orb in its slot so defect gets the buff that you have Runic Pyramid levels of control over your orb slots. Silent gets the buff that Poison doesn't tick down, and Shivs are literally permanent. They are retained between turns and combats. That's crazy. And Poison doesn't tick down. Okay, Watcher, what crazy buffs do you have? Because Ironclad, Iron Chad, is uh, not looking so great. Miracles, max of five. Miracle tokens can be used at any time. You can't have more than five miracles at once. Gain miracle tokens from cards and abilities. Your starting ability gives you a miracle. You can use them to go over the energy limit of maximum six. Scry and retain. Stand. So that makes it sound like... Do they still... Well, they don't specify like shivs do that they stay. It sounds like they retain for the combat, but not between combats. Wrath is different in this form too, Andrew. When you're in Wrath, you deal plus one damage, which granted most of the hits I shouldn't say most. A lot of the hits are just one, so it's still double. Oh, they go away at end of combat? This doesn't... You start combat with zero shiv. They don't go away until they're used or the end... Okay, I, I, yeah, no, I misread that. No, that's... It's not worded very well. They don't go away until they are used or the end of combat. They would go away at the end of combat. Okay. I had to read it literally five times, and I had to be told I was wrong, but now I get it, so it could be better. Okay, so shivs are not permanent, but that's fine. They at least still retain. They're still, they're still better than otherwise. It's definitely still a big buff. Oh yeah, there was something like that, I just glossed over it. This is way too far back now.
Oh, there we go, yeah. Lose all tokens. Ah, yep. Lose vulnerable, weaken, strength, shiv, and miracle. Except for gold. Remove all orbs. Go back to neutral stance. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would have assumed that they don't stay between combat. That's ridiculous. But I definitely did not clearly understand that to begin with. Okay. Still. So miracles retain. Uh, wrath form. While you're in wrath, you deal plus one damage on all hits. It's the same as having one strength. It only lasts until you leave wrath. If you end your turn in wrath, you take one damage. Oh, but it can be blocked. Okay, that's cool. No, no, no. Um, I meant to say that wrath, instead of doubling the damage that you take, you take one damage at the end of the turn. But apparently you can block it. I didn't think initially that you would be able to. So, that's pretty cool. You can also obviously leave Wrath during your turn and then that damage doesn't go through at all. Cool. Okay. So, not really a buff, it's just a mechanic difference because the game is different, with different numbers. But Silent and Defect definitely get a buff with those. Can you go infinite with Rushdown? I don't see why not. I mean, with infinite, with no maximum hand size, I feel like infinites are just easier. Maybe rushdown doesn't exist. But oh, once per turn. I would hope, personally, because I'm not a fan of infinite combos, that they ruled out any sort of way that people figured out how to do that. Like, if I have multiple drop kicks on Vulnerable, like, I shouldn't be able to just drop kick everything until the fight's over. Like, that's so dumb. I get in the card game you need to be able to do that, but not in a board game. Okay. Facts and random rules. Eh. You can block damage, you can't block loss of HP. Guaranteed infinites are okay. Near infinites keep other players waiting for you to finish your turn. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just becomes a thing of like, I mean obviously there's, there's infinite combos and Magic the Gathering all the time. And it just becomes a thing at some point where they're like, okay, I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that. And because of this, this triggers that, this triggers that, and now I can create a blah, and I can do this blah infinite number of times. I make an infinite number of blahs and I win. It's just like, okay. Like, it's just, it be there becomes a point where once once you've realized that it's possible, then you just, it's like playing Euchre. Every, you just throw your cards in, like, all right, the game's over. You know, you don't actually even, like, get to do the thing once it's known academically that it's possible. So it wouldn't even be three people are sitting there watching one guy flip cards. It would be three people sitting there, one guy flips a card, and it says, okay, well now I have my infinite, and everybody else agrees because they know how it, how it works, and then everybody just ends. Like, you're, you're missing, I don't know. I don't like it. I've never liked infinite anything. Part of it, I'll be honest, is lack of creativity for me. I'm not usually the best at like finding weird niche things that break rules. I much more prefer just like strong, consistent style of stuff. Like I'm gonna do really powerful things frequently and easily, and like that's gonna be how I beat you, is that you just won't be able to keep up kind of deal. That's more my style, so. Yeah, there's definitely some that are just crazy cool when you accidentally find your way into it. God, the, the weird-ass infinites I've seen Baylor do are just like, how did this happen? You know, and it'll, sometimes it'll even be like mid-fight, like the deck isn't even designed for it. it. He just identifies a way of like, hold on a second, I could do this, and all of a sudden, you know... 
Yeah. Anyway. If you run out of tokens, you can't gain or apply more, and the effect is ignored. This is true whether gaining gold, strength, or poison. But keep in mind with shivs, you can use them immediately to deal the damage. So a shiv never goes to waste unless you want it to. So if you run out of strength, I mean, why wouldn't they just give you enough strength tokens? Like, if the max is 8 strength, why wouldn't they just... I mean, maybe you get 20 then, like, because other characters aren't going to get as much as an Ironclad. You know, you don't necessarily need, what, 32 and then monsters to have some 50. Like, you don't need 50 strength tokens, but I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. Poison, you wouldn't need more than 30 poison, though. Because if 30 poison is the max, that implies that you can inflict 30 poison. And then I guess you could inflict it on other monsters elsewhere in combat. So I suppose poison you eventually have a max. Because you could theoretically inflict 30 poison on every monster in the fight. Somehow. And then none of them die and you keep inflicting it. So whatever the maximum number of enemies in combat are times 30 would be the maximum number of poison you would need to not have that issue. So that's that's not a thing. Well, they also don't tick down. And yeah, and all the numbers are also just low. I could see Noxious Fumes. Add one poison to every enemy in a row at the start of your turn. We'll see. I haven't opened up the specific cards. We just looked through everything, so... Yeah, I mean, if, if you're adding one every turn and it doesn't decrease, that's the same thing as adding two and having it drop by one every turn. Which literally is the exact same as base Noxious Fumes now. Although... With everybody being weaker, one damage a round is a lot more proportionally. Oh, one per turn and upgrades one to the row. Oh, yeah, because upgrading to two would be crazy. So that makes sense. The only other upgrade path would be making it cost zero energy. Or make it affect two rows? I could see that. But yeah, if, if monsters are going to have so much less HP and all the numbers are so much less, one poison to everybody being the exact same in both games is a crazy proportional buff. So yeah. Half as many turns. I feel like generally you're winning fights in three turns. I feel like it's across the obelisk. Like, you make a massive difference in turn one... You resolve all your issues in turn two, and then you win the fight turn three. You know? Anyway, obviously it, it totally depends on the type of deck and the class and the character and the monsters and all that jazz. There's a, a million variables. Obviously elites and boss fights, you'll be going, you know, seven to eleven turns. But... Oh yeah, there's, there's full ascension. It's in there. Yeah, it exists. Don't worry, dude. Perfected Strike clearly is in the game. There's a rule specifically talking about containing Strike in the name. Whoa! Do summons leave combat when all other enemies are killed? No. Unlike the video game, summons don't flee when their boss dies. Holy shit! The little gremlin minions are gonna stick around and kick your ass! Yo, what up, Cooper? You forgot to order this? I'm sure you still can. 
I'm sure there's still ways, methods. So, Andrew joined in late as well, after we had boxed everything back up. So we're almost done flipping through the rule book, and then I'll actually just unbox everything again now that both of you guys are here if you want. There you go, Cooper. They're still taking pledges. Open it back up. We will, we will. I just wanted to read a few things, but that's fine. Specific interactions, don't care. Cards from other characters, that's cool, that's fine. Runic Pyramid, or not, Prismatic Shard, that's fine. Copies, triggers, whatever. Yeah, here's a huge thing for unlocks and then Ascension. Yeah, here's the daily climb. How badass is it that a board game has a daily climb? That's so sick. Okay, yeah, then there's a thing on Act 4, but we'll leave that for later. Credits. Special thanks to the backers. There we go. I'm in here, technically. Okay. Alright, so that was the rule book. Here is the, uh, let me, let me bring this back. Um, what was this again? Upgrades and items reference. So, this just has a bunch of lists, just lists of all the stuff. Oh, Cooper, maybe you'll understand. The cards in this game, they literally look, they look like they're, MTG Unlimited printed with like just their saturation and how just intense the colors are versus how they normally look. And I thought you and Andrew would be the only two people who understand what I mean when I say that. That it literally looks like a third edition MTG card color style print. Um, a bunch of tokens. That you just pop out of here. A few of them already popped out. A book that tells you how to put everything back in the box properly. Hey, Mac. I mean, back in the day, we were in the top 1% of all social media channels in the world. Back in the day. I mean, honestly, it still probably technically is, simply because now there's billions of channels. And, you know, this still is, what, like, 19k subscribers? But, like, that number doesn't mean anything anymore. Because it's a dead channel. Yo, what's up, Lion-O? Um, but, like, yeah, obviously back in the day, the sub number that we had was extremely high for what we were doing. It was very crazy. No, I, I, I don't feel bad. The only part that's a little unfortunate is that all of our, all of our success was before money kind of became a thing. It became possible. That's my only, like, not, it's obviously it's not a regret, but it's like a aw shucks. Because it would have been a hell of a lot better doing this for a living, rather than having absolutely no idea what to do with my life, and being broke and miserable as, as shit with no job prospects. So, you know, anyway. This is a Slight Aspire stream, not a I'm Depressed stream. Is this game multiplayer? Yes, multiplayer board game. You got into MDG? <laughs> I haven't even played in like 15 years, man. I think the last time I went to a paper tournament was like 2011. The last time I played anything digital was like 2015, 2016. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway. All right, so box opens up. We have a merchant mat. Again, this, this webcam is also from the old YouTube days, so it's not clear. Figure stuff out. Yeah, no, I said that like 10 years ago. It still hasn't happened. And in fact, things are worse now than ever before. So it's it's even more difficult now. I, I truly don't know what that one I'm going to do. I, I need help or a winning lottery ticket. Oh, I've got a... Yeah. 
We've, we've got a couple other things. I got the collector's edition and then obviously the, uh, the kickstart stuff. So there's, there's a better map. We'll get to that later. I do remember one of my friends way back in the day when we were playing Silly Spire saw the not for sale tag on the rug. And it was hilarious because we had played a D&D session recently before that where some for some reason like he wanted to steal all the rugs from the place and like sell the rugs. And I guess I either like I must have mentioned that they were expensive or like I didn't factor in like how much they actually weigh like in my mind. And so I got rules checked. I was the DM that he just basically just walked off with like six rugs that were worth way too much money. And I was like, fuck. So then when there was that tag of the rug itself is not for sale, it was really funny seeing that. Yes, Indigo. <laughs> Dude, why he stole all the rugs. Like, what the fuck? So, yeah, when the when the Slay the Spire mat, when his merchant rug said the rug is not for sale, it, it kills me. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, disgusting. So, there is a little sticker of an errata. There was a mistake on one of the Ascension rules, so you put this over it, but we'll open Ascension stuff when we get there. Um, so each character has their own little board. It, you know, a little picture, a little description, everything looks crisp as hell. Um, again, the colors and the detail look way better to my eyes than they do through this 15-year-old low-quality camera. Um, and then on the flip side, it's indented, so you can, you know, put your little brick, your little cube to move your HP, move your block and your energy around. A little bit of descriptions for how stuff works. Um, and these things are like, they're hefty, they're strong, they're durable. These are legit, man. And there's obviously ones for each character. They all look absolutely fantastic. Really? Ironclad has one more hit point than the Silent. The, the book was like, he's got more HP. That's his advantage. He's got one. One more max HP. Even the Watcher has nine hit points. Ironclad got hosed. Even the Defect has nine hit points! Bro! I can't believe... Defect isn't like eight. Silent is eight. Watcher can be nine. That's fine. Iron Chad. Dude, I am not happy with the Iron Chad so far. It's such a letdown. I've even forgot. I, I forgot to call him Iron Chad. Silent and Defect are super tanky. I can imagine with Frost Orbs. Yeah. Two in love with Shivs. It's crazy, man. They look what they did to my boy. They massacred my boy. All right, so there's the the character mat. They're not mats, but like the, the play tables. So you have the act the act boards. It can't focus. Yeah. So it says act two. There's two different layouts. There's this layout. There's this layout. And then as you can tell, some of them are blank. There's dark spaces and light spaces that are blank. So you get random, you get tokens, you shuffle them up, then you randomize them and you place them in and then you flip them over. So that's how your board randomizes, but it's still partially the same. So there's the two partial layouts and you just pick it random. Um, again, sturdy, durable, strong, good quality stuff. Same with act one. I'm not gonna open it up or flip it open, but it's the same concept. Um, where's the act three board? Oh, is, is Act 2 maybe on the other side of Act 3? Oh, okay. I take it back. There's Act 3 on Act 2. So only Act 1 actually has two different paths. Are they even different? Yes. Okay, so Act 1 has two different paths. The others just have the one path. I'm a little bummed about that, but, oh, yeah, there you are. Now you're, you're describing it already for us. Um, play mat, oh, we're good. 
Um, individual playmats for the characters. Um, I opened up the ironclad one earlier, so we'll open up the ironclad one again. It opens just like a scroll. Oops, is that upside down? Yes. All right. So it's a little bit like a foot and a half long, maybe. Maybe a little bit less. About a foot and a half long. Um, it's really, really good quality, like mouse pad type material. Um, it's stitched very well, very durable. Looks absolutely sick as hell. I really wish this webcam took better color lighting but these things are totally sick so there's one of these for each character um, so you would take this and yeah so you put your player board here and then your cards have different sections here for it so ta-da yes um, these these mats, I don't, yeah, these mats were um, the collector's edition portion, I think. And uh, there was a couple other small things, like the merchant coins, I'll get to the coins later. I think that was also collector's edition. Yeah, these mats are sick. And I love play mats, so I had to get play mats. So there's one of these for each class. Um, there's a little cupboard thing. It snaps shut. It's actually really tight, so it's really strong. All your tokens and stuff go in there once you pop them off of that sheet. And then this snaps back in place to close. So, and like, this is, this is not coming off. That feels really, really nice. It's not just gonna go flying one day when the box turns around. Um, yeah, so, you get a bag for merchant coins, um, and we already saw the tokens. There's the ones and then some fives as coins, just little tiny, you know, the cardboard pieces. But then the collector's edition also came with, you know, legitimate freaking old fashioned currency where they're metal coins. You know, they're heavy, they're strong, you know, these are not bending, that's for damn sure. Um, they're durable. And just like, you know, the old-fashioned wallets from, you know, whenever metal became finally currency, you know, you can tie a string and put all your ones through the little loop, you know, and, you know, untie it, take your coins off, put coins on, tie it back up, and that's your wallet. So it's a super cool sort of look. These are heavy as hell. And uh, yeah, super cool coins. Love those things. So I, I think I think these mats and these coins I think were the collector's edition. I don't remember all the differences, but I think that's what that was. And then the uh, another box that we'll get to that little green one down there was uh, was a Kickstarter bonus. So so there's those. Uh, these are just plastic colored cubes, like the red ones you use for HP. You know, the blue ones you use for block. You know, you just track your energy and your block and stuff with the little cubes on the, on the boards. So nothing fancy with that, just cool little cubes. You know, they're transparent enough you can see through them and it turns your vision colored. It's kind of fun. Mark of the Bloom. Um, boss HP tracker or whatever on there, his own little thing. Here's another mat. I forget what this mat was. Oh, this is the mat where you put all the different kinds of cards, like the event card, the relic card, the elite card, you know, whatever the different types of cards. So they're just off to the side. They all have their spot to keep things organized. Um, you get a D6. These D6s are big as hell. And then you get a tiny little boot token. It's literally a little boot. Um, So there's that. And then here's all the goodies. Well, the boot now is... <laughs> right, Cooper? The boot now is how you 
uh, where your characters, like you determine where you're going and where you are on the map. It's your marker, because your characters are off on the side over here to determine which row they're in. Um, so here's the, uh, the figurines. You can't see the detail on the camera, we already tried. Like you can see sort of that there's some lines, but they definitely look much better to the eye than you can see on this because I have a shitty camera. Since they're already color coordinated to their character and class, I honestly don't know if it's worth painting. It's probably not worth painting them. I think they're gonna just be better as is. So there's the washer. Um, normally on a lot of figures and stuff like this, when they have like spears and stuff, they're like really flimsy and bendy. These are actually pretty good. Like I don't have any sort of concern that something's gonna snap off or break from her whatsoever. Um, so they're, they're good stuff. Same thing with Iron Chad's sword, like, this isn't moving, it's fine. So there's, there's no concern, they're strong, they're durable, they look good. And I don't think there's any need to paint them. Yeah, Nemesis is now Super Beast. You don't have a boot, you can't stop me! Um, crap ton of card sleeves. Um, we did take out one sleeve earlier and we sleeved the forest. Where did that go? I think this is a while. Yeah. So. Here we go. Yeah, so we got a Necrotal and then the Slate Aspire card sleeve. It's literally identical to. It's identical to a Dragon Shield from Magic. It's the same resistance, the same strength, the exact same size. Um, You just, you know, sleeve it in there and ta-da, sleeve, card. So it's literally just a dragon shield, which is perfect. It's all it needs to be. It's all anyone would have ever asked or hoped for. So tons of those, that's what all of these are. These are all sleeves, and then there's another, yeah, there's like one more pack of sleeves somewhere up in there too. Maybe warped a bit, but you can fix it. It's very, very slightly like angled or whatever on mine. Um, I don't really know how to best. Yeah, like it, it's only very slightly curved. Yeah, yeah. So like normally, it should be like that if it was to be straight, but like. It's very, very slight. I'm not even remotely concerned. It's not like it's bent super weird, and it's strong and durable. Like, it's not gonna bend or break or get worse. So no, I'm, I'm totally fine with that how it is. Yo, what's up, Volk? Um. Yeah, so the stupid plastic makes it extra hard to see, but um, the cards just look how you want a card to look. They're all packaged in these things, and you go from there. So there's cards for all the different character classes. We got Neo bonuses. We did open up and look at some of the Neo bonuses. Um, yeah, stop. Don't open this until you unlock shit. Um, Viper, what are what are these pack of cards for? What's this small pack for? There's like a minute, like this is like a half size card. There's like one for each character. There's a die. Like I don't I don't know what this is for. Here, let's open it up again. Yeah, so there's like one for each character, and then just like generic. Potion, Relic, Boss Relic, like whatever, it's just a card. Storage Dividers? Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I remember reading that at the very end. 
No, that's right. I do remember reading that now. I just totally forgot. They're dividers. Okay, cool. Rock, paper, scissors? Hell yeah, bro! On shoe. What, let's see, what am I going to do here? We'll do three throws. Alright. You ready, Volk? On shoe. Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. And rock, paper, scissors, shoe. How'd you do, buddy? Let's look at some of these Neo bonuses again. One one lost you. Ah, good. <laughs> I, I'll take those results. So uh, why is this not focusing? This can do better. I right, gain three gold and a card reward, and then you get to do one of those three things. And then there's a bunch of other ones. We'll just go to one at random. Gain if it wants to focus three gold and a card reward. Remove transform. What is that? Oh, gain a relic, lose HP. You know, gain three gold and a card reward, and then, you know, upgrade or get three potions or upgrade random cards, lose two HP. So, cool Neo bonuses. I feel like you shouldn't get a Neo bonus for your very first run. Okay. Um,. There's our mini cards for all like the items and stuff. So these don't have sleeves because they're not like used or played very much. They mostly just like sit in the deck and then like you'll draw one or whatever. So these don't have sleeves. They do sell sleeves for them. I know my brother has a million because they're standard half size sleeves. Um, so I'll end up just borrowing some from him. But my concern is that there's not really base in the case if these were all sleeve is my only concern because that's a crap ton of cards so that's going to take up a whole bunch of extra space to sleeve all of that that's not really designed for so it is a minor concern um, but again the sleeves aren't don't default come in uh, as sleeves do for the rest of the stuff but you can't they do sell a sleeve everything upgrade. I imagine, yeah, I imagine it's very tight for one sleeve. What have I been doing? <sighs> I have no idea, man. I don't even know. <sighs> How many years has it been? Yeah, we haven't done anything pokes related in a long time. Um, I mean, I did play the Diamond and Pearl remakes when it came out. Um, I did play a couple of ROM hacks over the last few years. Um, but otherwise we pretty much haven't really played anything since like 6th gen. We did a little bit of competitive in 6th. Um, I didn't touch 7th, 8th at all. Um, I played Violet. We, we did play, uh, yeah, we did do an LP of Violet on Twitch. Um, but otherwise, very rarely do we actually do anything with it. Mostly just, I don't know. Like, it's not something I get to do very often, so... Like, I'm not gonna get involved in it and then do it once every handful of months, you know? It's just not worth whatever. So, if I go on Showdown, it'll be like, mo you know, maybe a couple fourth gens, and then it'll just be like randoms, because I'm not gonna know any of the mods or the moves or the abilities or anything like that. So, like, I'm not gonna get involved in my OS crap just to never play it, so... Um, what else is it? Yeah, so then your starter decks. And then just all the other cards, really. You know, monster cards here, Act 1 cards, Curse cards, and other cards. So, um, we do have the boss cards. All the bosses are in here. I kind of wish that they would have had, you know, the stronger, whatever this is, called the you know harder stronger thicker cardboard rather than just like a large card for the monster cards but what it is 
Almost diamond? Holy shit. Well, oh, because you're playing broken ass top lane. Okay. <laughs> I haven't played in a few months. I finished my placements at gold two. Um, and like, I always wanted to hit plat, but now that emerald exists, platinum isn't the same. So like the desire to hit plat, especially when I'm as close as gold two after placements, like it wouldn't really be that hard, probably. But hitting plat now doesn't mean it. Right? So I just, I haven't really played. Um, I had to abandon my main account because my main account, there was, there was clearly something wrong with it. So and now I only have my, my alt. My alt has now become my main. And I just haven't really played. Rocket League. No, Rocket League I would never be uh, never be as good as I used to be. Um, Rank-wise. Because all the people that were however that good that was then, like, they're going to all be so much better now. And there's, there's so much more stuff that people can do now that never existed back then either. Beta art lets you double up on reward decks, but the game isn't balanced for it and weird things can happen. If I were to use beta art, it would, personally, if I were to use it, it would just be swapping the regular one. Just if I wanted a different look, but I've never used any beta art anyway, even in-game. I've never cared. I think I've looked at it being like, haha, that's funny, the disarm is a, you know, this or whatever. Oh, limit break, times two, haha. Never really cared. Um, yeah, Ascension stuff. Don't open this until you've gotten to Act 4 or done Ascension 10. Alright, so we won't open it. Um, so that's... The contents, obviously we haven't opened up these individual sleeves of cards, but like we know what they are. So, I, I have thought about there being a few, but I didn't really ever take the time to go through like one by one and be like, I like that one, I like this one. So I just never did, but there are certainly some that are like, this is cool, I would use that. You know, I think having like two or three would be kind of weird. Like I want it all to be the uniform, but... Whatever. So there's there's that stuff. And then the uh, Kickstarter bonus box. It's another little box over here. So this comes with that merchant mat that uh, Indigo would be very unhappy with. Oh, there it is. There's the tag. I didn't see this the first time. I just thought it was like your generic tag. No, yeah. Not for sale. Okay. Because uh, in the game, I think it's like posted up here. It's like hanging down. So I, I expected to see like a graphic like printed and like covered up. But no, it's a legit tag. So there you go. It doesn't quite look as nice. I will unfortunately say that the, uh, the Kickstarter bonus box, the stuff doesn't quite look as nice as the regular base stuff. It just comes off... It looks like it's a copy, like it's not the original document. You know, it just it just looks a little flat. You know, or like the uh, the foil card. Yeah, there's a pack of foil cards if you want to make some cards foil. You know, they just uh, they just look a slightly more flat than otherwise. So I, I'm probably not really going to use any. They're here at least. I mean, they, you know, they are cool. You can't really tell the shine on camera. Here, you actually here's a here's a little bit of a better way. You can tell the shine a little bit there. So, and then a new card, golden ticket. When you reveal golden ticket, reveal a rare card. Oh wow! All of a sudden, it focused real good. What the hell? That looks nice now. That's the best the cameras looked all day. That is the best that shit has looked all day. Let's see if I can get Blade Dance in the same angle. Maybe? Maybe because there's no words on Blade Dance. Maybe? Are my fingers in the way, maybe? Yeah, I don't know if maybe the foiling is messing it up, or maybe there's just no words so it doesn't know how to focus, but... 
Um, yeah, the Kickstarter exclusive box. The stuff just just doesn't look quite as cool. Um, you do get another D6, and instead of pips, it's ah, oh, this is impossible to see. Let me take it out of here. Yeah, the rares are a separate pile. Um, so instead of pips, it's a little claw marks because the claw is law, I guess. Whatever stupid claw defect means from uh, the defects card claw. So there's obviously one through six on there. The die does feel cooler and look a little bit cooler than the standard wooden die. And it's just nice having two dice for a group of four players or whatever anyway. Not that you don't have D6s, but having an extra die is nice. Um, and then uh, these are one thing that I do like. If I can open up the Ziploc here. Where did I put... I don't know where I put it. Yeah, so one of the... One of the tokens on that pop-out thing are the, the three keys. Um, so, you know, the, the green key for beating the Burning Elite. Well, the Collector's Edition, not the Collector's, the Kickstarter has different ones. So instead of like just the regular little cardboard pop-outs, it's like a, like a resin plastic. Um, you can see that it's a little fuzzy on the text. That's actual like texture. You can feel it. It's slightly bumpy. Um, and then it's smooth on the sides. So these keys, you know, they, they do look really cool. They've got some weight, some heft. They are smaller overall, but they're they're chonky and uh, super strong, and they look they look nice. So I do like these. Um, and then oh, here you go. Yeah, a claw pack. So I don't know what's in here. Viper, can you tell us what's in the claw pack? Because I actually didn't plan on opening it. But there's some cards in the claw pack, so. How many pressure points are there? <laughs> no idea. Eight claw cards with the following description. Oop, I forgot this. Oh, not loading. <laughs> You're loading up your own game. You don't actually remember. That's funny. Oh yeah, Cooper. Um, if you have the digital game on PC, which I thought you had it on Switch or something instead, um, but Viper made a mod on PC. You can play the board game version on the PC version of Slay the Spire, single player if you wanted to not necessarily invest $200 or whatever. Um, he made the mod for it, so it's a thing. Yeah, the video game inspired by the board game inspired by the video game. struggling to get this close. Zero cost attack, deal one, two damage on upgrade. Okay, isn't like so literally a normal claw, just with the damage change. Does the defect standard deck not have claws in it? Is there something different with those claws? non-kickstarter exclusive claw is zero cost attack, deal one damage, plus, plus one three damage if the topmost card you know just... huh hmm 
Mario Life? Never heard of that one. Zero cost, deal one damage. What do you mean plus one? Oh. Oh, deal, okay, so deal one damage and then deal plus one if the topmost card in your discard costs zero. And then the upgrade would be deal plus three damage. Or no, do you mean plus one additional? So like, it deals one damage. If the top card is zero, it deals two total. But the upgrade deals three total. Okay. Wait, plus three one upgrade, so it deals four damage? Yeah, and the Kickstarter Claw is a normal Claw. You're not supposed to mix them, you can put anywhere between two and eight Claw Pack cards in the deck. I just wouldn't want that many Claws. Like, that's clearly just there for the memes of people who want to just go Claw, 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 Claw. Like, I get it. How many claw cards are there by default in the normal deck? Oh, it said there's two. There's two of every common. So then theoretically, you could add eight additional claws, and all of them make all the other claws stronger. That sounds crazy, but... Anything more than four is overpowered, but fun. <laughs> Yeah, I'll actually just leave those sealed. That's fine. The board game has a, f a few differences. I will leave the board game to have its differences. It's totally fine. I want it to be as designed. So, yeah, so there we go. We have now unboxed everything twice. I haven't obviously opened, you know, the individual cards to look at every individual card. But... I'll do that at some point and sleeve them and then put them all back in the box. You know, we, we know what the cards are because it's the monsters and the relics. And yes, there will be some differences, of course, but for the most part, we're aware of what we're dealing with. Even with eight claws in the reward deck, you want to draft three or four. Well, and even if you could draft eight, like, then that's all you're doing. You're Unless you have frost orbs already set up, like you're gonna get beat up a little bit, I would think. Although, yeah, you'll also just start to murder real quick. It might not matter. Turn one might be tough, but I mean that's obviously the the how that type of scaling works. Like it's whatever. Claw is law. Okay. Okay, so there we go. There's everything twice. some hype music. I haven't been paying attention to the music at all. Oh shoot, I forgot this. Oh, can't forget the uh, silicone packs. Keep the game fresh. Some collectors need that. Okay, everything has been... Oops. 
forgot about these. I guess it will save a little bit of space. Once you pop out all the tokens, you won't need to keep the empty cardboard um, plank or whatever in here. So I guess that will save a little bit of room. How is the shuffle feel? I, honestly, I don't know because I've only I only ever took out one sleeve. But they they felt and looked just like Dragon Shield, so that might be a question better for Viper. If you're shuffling the cards, do they split and rip on each other all the time, like cheap sleeves, or are they good? For the specs? I don't know if that's necessarily a spec. I think that's just... Oh, you haven't actually got it yourself? Never mind then. Alright. Yeah, the box is definitely a snug fit. and I don't have anything sleeved up yet. Because it slowly pushes air out. There we go, but it does all fit. So, boom. Is it Gloomhaven weight? No, Gloomhaven weight is a lot. Um, this is, I think it technically said six kilograms on the side. Um, let me look at my shipping box here. Yeah, that says six kilograms and that says 15 pounds, which is almost exactly the same. Dragon Shield is a higher spec than ours, 120 micro counts to 100. I didn't realize there was like a difference. I mean, I, I've always just thought like cheap sleeve versus good sleeve. Definitely did not think about you know, the math behind their engineering for the value of rating scale. So they're, what, 20% weaker then? That sounds like a lot for card, for sleeves, that, like, they felt the same. Like, holding it and then, like, you know, rotating it, you know, trying to push it open. How many cards per coach? Oh, it's said in here. I think it's roughly, like, 87 like 84 to 87, I forget the exact number per character. Um, and then there's other stuff that you sleeve in as well. There's enough sleeves in here for everything, with the exception of the, the small stuff that they said you don't, you don't need to sleeve. So... Yeah, I didn't even think about sleeves splitting. That'd be sad. Because then, yeah, if you don't have any extras and stuff starts to split, it's like, do you, do you unsleeve everything now? Ascender's band, I'm pretty sure. How many extra sleeves a bag? Um, let's see here. It should... Because I want to say on the... On the Kickstarter thing, it said how many total pieces there were. Ah, see, Foil Ascender's Bane I think I would use. I might use Foil Curses. Okay, here we go, yeah. 450 art sleeves and 650 cards, but I think that's not counting those, the miniature ones. Oh no, 112 small cards, 26 large. The 26 large are like the bosses and stuff. So this sounds like it's not enough to sleeve everything.
I love how on the box it says the playtime is 60 to 90 minutes, but then in the book it says 60 to 90 minutes per act. So really it's three hours to five hours. All right, well, it's cool that my box says collector's edition on the front. Really, 25 count for... Oh, that's in like the extra pack then, right? Because I didn't buy an extra sleeve pack. Maybe I should have, because then I get to sleeve the larger and the smaller stuff. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't get the sleeves for everything else. I don't know why I convinced myself that I didn't need it or didn't want it. And now that I'm here opening this, I'm thinking, why would I have done that? Because I know that I want to sleeve everything. I mean, I know that I also have a million sleeves, and my brother has a million sleeves, and we can just use those. But the larger boss cards, that's not a normal size sleeve. I would need to specifically buy sleeves for it. Yeah, and then for all the little stuff and the boss stuff, you would just want double transparent, I would think. You wouldn't want the the covered back. The gameplay cards need it because of upgrades. When you upgrade a card, you flip it over. So you have to take it inside out, or I mean, whatever. You know. Oh, French Toast is trying to break down the door. Okay, buddy, come on. Come here. Okay, big guy. Oh. Hi. Hi. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Hi. Good boy. Good boy. He wants to... I want to slay spires. I come prepared with claws. I come prepared with claws. Upgraded claws. French toasty, French toasty. Oh, you done? You want to run around? You know you're not allowed in here, dude. So you're going to knock shit over, and you're going to chew on cables, and you're going to cause damage. You know you're not allowed in here, buddy. I know this is a special treat. Oh. Hi. Right. Where are you going? You're trying to get away? Oh, you want to stand on my back? Okay. You can. Ow! Parrot. Cat. I don't trust you there. You're going to jump somewhere bad. Oh, now you're purring loudly. Hi, buddy. Ah, okay. Oh. You're going to chew on the box. I am not going to let you chew on my box. It's brand new. It's a collector's item. Oh, nope, nope. There you go. You're already trying to chew on it. Not happening. <laughs> He wants to sit in the box. This is one shipping box he does not get permission to get. Okay. Now they think they have permission for life. No, he, he comes in periodically. Because he'll jump at the doorknob and just keep attacking it for hours until he eventually gets in. So, 
There's nothing I can do about that. Alrighty. Here's the music that we've been playing all day as it cycles randomly. Premium cat bed, right? Just get like a really, really nice play mat. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's just, I'll even just paste it in the chat. I don't know if this goes to both. It does go to both. Sweet. Yeah, it's just a website that has thousands of video game tracks and it just shuffles through them at random. And some of them are remixes. Um, but you know, whatever. It's just random music. There's no ads or anything. It's, just, it's super simple. You go to the website and it plays music for free. So... Some of them have vocals, but not very many. It's, I would say, like 95% vocal less, maybe 98. Um, even some that do have vocals that are very sparing. There's not a whole lot. So, yeah, I've, I've been using this for years. I used this during the YouTube days. If I needed some game music or background music, I often would use this page and I would play it. And then I would, you know, cut or whatever. I'd take the mic away before it was done. Um, the frog theme was a remix that I found from this website. Uh, where is it? Hmm. Must be under Chrono Trigger? Yeah, it ended up, I ended up using it as my victory theme for years. Oh, fuck, just when I found it. Yeah, it was my victory theme song for years in YouTube battles, and I found it from here. There we go. What? What happened? No, what happened? No. Website. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's not playing. Seriously. All right, well, how about Robo Roll? How did I break it? What does this non-non mean? I wonder if maybe these are no longer on the website. Maybe these got taken down. Oh. I wonder if maybe they got taken down or something. Yeah, none of the Chrono Trigger songs are working. Crazy. I used to take some Donkey Kong Country music from here too, though, because it's so good. What? Why are none of these working? Did I break the website trying to change the volume? What did I do? All right, click on random thing. I think I just broke something. Okay, I definitely broke something. What the fuck? 
How is nothing working all of a sudden? <clears throat> okay, I don't know what I did, but I broke it. <laughs> Cooper. Wow. Yeah, this is on my iPod too. Like I I heard this song from here, thought it was neat, downloaded it. Oh, finally something plays. Very strange, man. Okay, now that now the music is actually playing. Let's try this again. Yeah, some of the Castlevania remixes are insane. There we go. You guys will recognize this. So yeah, that's how long I've had this website bookmarked. Through multiple different computers multiple different decades yeah I've used this website so much so much free music and it just plays like this is everything that you would ever want from any other sort of music streaming playing service device anything just plays good music for free feels old dude we're middle aged now what the hell like, I don't feel like I'm that different. I mean, I know I've changed and grown a lot. I know there's a lot of things now that I know differently or feel differently about that before I never would have considered when I was in my early 20s and teens. But, like, I don't really feel like I'm that different. My life doesn't feel like it's changed that much. I'm still, like, doing the same stuff in the same places with the same people. 20 years have gone by? What the hell? half of my life. Like, I was 20 when we were doing that stuff, and now we're almost 40? It's disgusting, man. I don't get it. Like, how have I not done something more with my life in the next, in the last 20 years? Give another 5 to 8? I've already been feeling it for 10. I just... How have I not done anything else in my life? Like, I feel like... We spent so much time on Pokemon. I spent so much time on Pokemon and the channel that I just put everything on hold because that was like a limited time thing and it was huge and it was awesome. And then it ended and and then what? I just kept punching in at work and going home and nothing ever changed. I haven't gone anywhere. Well, it would explain why I've been struggling so much the last ten years. I haven't done anything. Anymore. sucks, man. Okay, man, how long have you been here? Did you just show up just to talk some shit? Okay. <laughs> Kidding. Go back and buy NVIDIA stock? Go back and buy Bitcoin. NVIDIA only blew up recently. That's not a big deal. But yeah, you could pick any stock. It wouldn't even matter. I remember when BP had their oil spill in like 2006 or something. Obviously their stock plummeted and I told my parents, I'm like, just buy a whole bunch of it because it's going to go back up. People are going to continue to buy their gas because they need to fuel their car. They're not going to go out of business. Just buy it. And then, you know, a few months later, whatever it was, right back to normal. I'm like, yep, free money. I know my brother said the same thing when uh, eBay went public. He was like buy a shit ton of eBay stock. I think I think he was in the military at the time, so he couldn't or something like that. But he told them to just like buy as much of it as they could. You know, right about that one. You just showed up. Well, you missed everything. We did the unboxing twice. We did two unboxings. Same box. Yeah. Yeah. So, best time to buy it was whenever that was. 20 years ago, the next best time to buy it was yesterday. So. How are some of my stocks doing? Because, yeah, isn't there like 
World War going on? Oh, I don't have my, uh, I don't have my bookmark on my other browser anymore. I thought a bunch of things went down because of the, the military fighting of the past few days. I thought, hey, maybe there's finally a little bit of a dip I can reach in. I just didn't actually check. I'll look tomorrow. Yeah, Cooper just spent over $200, and it's my fault. <laughs> oh, yeah, CD. Ha! I always told myself, especially because of when I used to work at GameStop and then all the videos and stuff, that I'm, I'm sure I sold so many copies of games and so many consoles, so many DSs, because people wanted to play. That, like, I feel like I get a lifetime pass on pirating Nintendo shit. Because one, they deserve it. You know, and two, it's like, please, like, I, I, I'm sure I have directly given you tens of thousands of dollars. From me, not from my pocket, but because of my pocket. And then God, you know, how many people did I get involved in the Pokes TCG and Magic the Gathering? Somebody earlier in chat, you know, two hours ago, three hours ago, came in and said that he started playing magic because of me like there you go wizards of the coast making bank so it's like that gives me a lifetime pass i don't feel bad about pirating wii stuff or switch stuff i mean i'll play up all those games you owe me <laughs> right influence with no kickback <laughs> influence with no reward Oh well. So anyway, that was the plan. We uh, we did our unboxing video. I thought maybe we would do a daily run of Slay the Spire just because it's on it's on brand, it's on stream. Um, but now it's been almost four hours. It's almost 11.30. We haven't started a daily run yet. I don't think we will. I think we're just going to chat until we decide to go to bed. Only pokes. No, man, I'm still waiting. Once we win the lottery and I have hundreds of millions of dollars and I don't know what to do with it, I'll do regular video game tournaments for massive cash prizes. We'll make a whole Discord and community for it. We'll hire people to help run things for different time zones and, you know, organize graphics and brackets and shit like that. Victory Road. That Victory Road sounded much better when we were all like 20 years old and like the concept of owning a house wasn't even a thought yet. But now that we're all in our 30s, most of us, well, Kote's in Japan. I don't know if he owns his house now, though. Cooper, do you own or do you rent? I don't actually know. I thought you own. Andrew, you just bought a house. I have a house. Like, we're not, Victory Road's not happening anymore. We all have places. Yeah. Cooper, how are the jobs down there? Is anyone hiring? Can I, can I move in? <laughs> no, Alabama would be too hot. You would sell. You got four bedrooms. I mean, if I, if I won $500 million, would you sell and move to the US? I don't know about that. Stacy would be like, hell no. We're not going to America. We're going to get shot. And I wouldn't blame her. You'd hate to buy it. Hey, try buying one two years ago. It was not really any better. Alabama is too Alabama. Isn't Alabama getting better? Or at least Tuscaloosa? <laughs> Cooper's there. How bad can it be? Nick Saban's gone. Michigan kicked him out of into retirement. We took care of him for everybody. be indigo plateau but that's not important i remember a year or so ago my brother had the same thought but different 
when it was one of the days when the lottery was like 1.3 billion or whatever. So we're at board game night with the guys and we're just chatting and joking about, you know, stuff because it's what you do. Um, and his, his wife is a realtor. And he was just like, if we won that, we'd buy a big ass thing of land and we'd build a bunch of big ass mansions on it. And then all you guys could come live and we'd call it the friend zone because that's where all the friends are. And it's like that double, I don't know if he intended for it to be the double entendre of like, haha, you live in the friend zone. But like, it's literally the exact same idea that I said with you guys. Yeah, we'll have Victory Road. You know, we'll have five houses. Board game night that we play every Friday is five of us. So it was just, it was so funny. I was laughing inside. I'm like, that's literally the Victory Road idea. But he called it the friend zone. Fucking hilarious. Yeah, cost of costs of everything are going up, and, and no wages. And then last year I lost my job, and now I make half of what I used to, with no perks and no benefits and no future. So it's like, what am I gonna do? Non-Alabama as Alabama gets. There you go. Victory Road would fend off the people with guns. I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know where we would put Victory Road. I really don't. Because at that point, you'd get to pick anywhere. Like, would, it, would we want East Coast? Would we want West Coast? You know, we would want it to be like super warm. Would we still want some winter? I feel like we would still want four seasons. We would, we'd want to be able to play hockey. Like, we want skating to be a thing. But you also want summer and beach and water on the border. I'm sure there's some rich segments of Michigan next to the border of Canada. I'm sure that there's, that there's a thing. She gets to live. She gets a flat in Windsor or in Sarnia or whatever. She commutes every day to see her family. <laughs> Learns all the border guards by name, falls in love. Suddenly, Andrew becomes backseat. A road that's half and half. I know there's like some golf courses in Texas where some of them are, some parts of the golf course are actually in Mexico. I know there's like one of those islands that's, here's the Michigan, you know, one of the islands that's like whatever, kind not on the border per se, but in the vicinity, super close to Canada. That's like a really rich and exclusive neighbor. Like it's literally an island. You need a bridge to get there, so it's gated off from all the flames. You know. I don't know, but I didn't even—I didn't even mean like Michigan or like city. Like obviously, there's nicer cities. You wouldn't have to worry about job prospects or anything. So you could just pick like just a nice place to live. I would worry more about climate and like specific locale of like, is there cool stuff to do? in fantasy magical Christmas land of winning the lottery. Like I honestly, I would I would start a game store. You know, we'd have tournaments and, and shit like that. For all kinds of stuff, card games, board games, video games, you know, whatever. It'd be like a museum slash arcade slash collection slash tournament ground slash all that jazz. That would be fun as hell. And I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, profit. Like every day you could have a different thing. You know? Friday Night Magic. Monday Night Pokes. Tuesday Night Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know. Wednesday Night... Wednesday Night Elestrals. I don't care. Why not? <laughs> you know? You have D&D on the weekends. Warhammer on Thursday or whatever. I did a video game tournament, so that'd be so, so freaking cool. I know May has said many times that she would like to start a restaurant. And she's got like three or four friends that own their own restaurants. And May's food is dramatically better than the restaurant food that we get when we go Thai. So, but that'd be something cool we could do. It could be like off on the side, like an extension of the building or whatever, like next door, but connected. 
So like then there'd be their own, you'd be, have a cafe in there, like have like a small, like how gas stations have like pizzeria and like fried chicken or whatever. Like yeah, you could have like the Thai food and the pizza and whatever on that spot. Be badass. Man. And it, it would just be fun. That's what I would do. Go back to content creation and give away tournament prizes. Be badass. Oh well. Private Jet, who do you think we are? Taylor Swift? Elon Musk? <laughs> anyway. See, now I want to look up the rest of this Kickstarter and see if I want to actually buy the extra sleeves. thousand percent funded gotta love it yeah so the base the base pledge was board game claw pack and stretch goals collector's pledge was board game claw pack um, stretch goals a bigger box, metal coins, extra playmats. So that was the collector stuff. I wanted the playmats, I wanted the bigger box. The all in was all of that stuff, plus beta art, a table playmat, and a carry bag. I did want the table playmat and bag, but I didn't really care about the beta art. And the price difference was enough where I was like, eh. But that, that was a cool one. Cooper, that's the one you got then, right? Oh, hell yeah. Later, Cayman. Thanks for stopping by, man. Good to see you, dude. Are there pictures of it on here? Okay, hold on. Here's, so here's the board game. Kickstarter exclusives, the foil cards, the extra claw die, the extra mat, the claw pack, the extra keys. Okay, collector's pledge comes with base game contents and, okay, so here we go. Yeah, so here's my extra play mats and the coins, which is not too much more. But the playmats are amazing. And the bigger box, huge. Needed that. The all in. Oh, that's right. That table playmat. Man, I really didn't want that. I just didn't care about the beta art. It would literally, it, honestly, the, the beta art would just sit in the box. I might, I would like have opened the box, maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't have used any of it. I really did want that playmat, though. Mm. Although, I think my brother bought everything, because he backed it also. I want to say he got everything. I want to say he got Neo's all-in bonus. And so that's another reason I was like, I don't need to get everything. I think that might have been part of my logic. To which then, yeah, I wouldn't feel as bad. I can't even just ask him, I think. No, he won't. Maybe he won't know off the top of his head. It's fine. Can piecemeal it. Yeah. Um, although I want to say at the time that I last looked. Yeah, so the, the table mat in case. 
was 50 bucks. And the difference... 210 minus 1. My brain's too tired to do this simple math, so I'm not going to. 210 minus 145. 65. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess technically then you get the beta art for 15 instead of 20. So it's not really that much of a savings to have not piece me with five bucks. And then I don't get the thing that I don't even want anyway. I, I just straight up save the money on that. I really should have. Because then you lay down the whole mat and then you put the other mats on top of the mat. I should have done that shit. It is kind of weird to carry it though, because then you're carrying a box and you're carrying like this sleeve. I don't know. I do slightly regret it. I guess I could still get it. Sleeves for everything else. I should get the sleeves for everything else. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll double check with him. Make sure, make sure that he got the neos all in. If he didn't, then I'm definitely gonna just pick up the extra pieces. Maybe I get the table mat anyway. I mean, to be fair, Andrew, you're still here, right? Like the plan was that whenever it is that we get to meet up, um, wasn't it? You just pay me half for this, and then you keep all the stuff because you've got the family to play it with. So. Maybe if you want, if you especially if you want the mat and the beta cards, then we definitely pick it up. Right, not yet, but man, 2019 was five years ago, dude. I feel like the older we get, the faster time is gonna move. Dude, you're gonna blink, and Zeph and Ruben are gonna be driving. You're gonna blink. It's not it's not cool, man. Yeah, time is moving so much faster. And just we're middle age now, like thing I don't even want to think about it. I get super existential and depressed about it. Yeah, like ugh. You know. You don't think about that stuff when you're a teenager or when you're in your 20s. Not that you don't know that it's there, that it's going to happen eventually, the time is going to pass eventually, but it's so much further away when it's 75% away as opposed to 50% away. Your daughter's going to school. Yeah, and I've never even seen her. I've at least met Zeph, right? Have I even met Ruben? I don't even know if I've met Ruben. I know I've seen Zeph though. Maybe Ruben was like an infant. Maybe. But like that's at most. Well, I don't even... Pff, bro, I don't even know any... Yeah. I mean, God, five years ago in the before times of COVID. Five fucking years ago, dude. It's wild. I do kind of want this table mat either way though, right? Yeah, I feel like we should just add that in there. And then we eventually split it up with the rest of the game. It's probably worth getting extra sleeves in case there are stuff that rips, right? That makes sense. Spend $10, get an extra pack of sleeves just in case stuff rips. And then you just get to sleeve more stuff anyway, I, I suppose. Cooper, did you get the pack for sleeves for everything else and an extra 100 art sleeves, or just the one pack? How many beta cards are there? Because I wonder then if the 100 art sleeves is then enough for the beta art.
which would make sense. Extra 200. Oh, extra 200 plus everything else. Oh, damn. Yeah, and 10 for 100 is not even that bad. Not at all. Yeah, it's one of those, like, are they going to be available later at some point? Ah, who knows? We really should just go take a gander at, at the actual specifics. Because I know it says that they, they provide cards, enough cards to sleeve everything that you play with. Okay, what, where is it on here? Yeah, see, the uh, the Kickstarter says 730 cards. My box said like 630 or 650, I thought. Okay, yeah, so 80 plus... So 80, I think it's 84 to 86. I think, yeah, because I think two of the classes are 84 and two of them are 86. So we'll just say 85 times 4. Um, but then I don't know what else you need to sleeve. I don't know what else actually needs sleeving. Because that's already 340. It's not super clear on how many you're getting either. 410 plus, 730 plus, just do the math for me, man. Like, you know the exact number. It's not like these are like massive numbers with lots of digits and anything. It's literally the difference between saying 40 and 43. Like... Nothing in the Kickstarter box has sleeves included. Oh yeah, and then there's the foils. There's 400 beta cards? Oh shit, I didn't even think about that. Because yeah, there's beta art for everything. Well, no, wouldn't the beta... Oh, yeah, because there's two copies of all the comments. I mean, I don't personally care about the beta anyway. And then, yeah, if you sleeve too much, then stuff no longer fits either. But I would want to have some extras... In case you want to sleeve a little bit more, or in case uh, some sleeves rip after shuffling. Expansion. You know, like, even if, let's say, even if they give you enough to sleeve everything, is it exactly enough so you only have, like, three spares or whatever? Right? I could freaking use them as for a magic. If I ever go back and do a draft or whatever, I would totally have to slay this player cards. Absolutely. Yeah, so maybe I do get the sleeves for everything else plus an extra 200. And then that's going to be way more sleeves than I would need. But maybe not. Three hundred and twenty plus. Oh yeah, because that's what we said right there was the yeah, roughly three hundred. I hate that. Three hundred and twenty plus upgradable cards. Like you know exactly how many there are for the four classes. Just give me the exact number. So that's a little annoying. I'm not gonna lie. Is 200 extra sleeves even enough then? It's 
Yeah, so the daily reveals, colorless pack. I didn't see a colorless, maybe it's just like already in with other cards. The foil cards are Kickstarter exclusive, which I got those. Oh, these are daily reveals. These aren't necessarily Kickstarter. Oh, stretch goals, that's what I was thinking of. Blank cards, token tray, acrylic, that's what I, I said resin, but yeah, acrylic is the word I needed. Oh, there is a Sneko Eye thing. Oh, here you go, Andrew. Sneko Eye is just a relic. You roll the die at the start of the turn like you do for it's just at the start of the turn. On a 1 or a 2, you draw 2. On a 3 or a 4, you gain an energy. On a 5 or a 6, you gain a daze, it looks like. So 33% chance there's a small bad thing. 66% chance you get a good thing. Yeah, 85, 87, 85, 85. So, like, why couldn't they just say 342? Why did they say 320 plus? Okay, plus 13 curses, 22 colorless, 10 days, 36 status, 423. And then what else do we need to sleeve? Like, do you need to sleeve encounter decks or anything like that? Monster cards? I'm not sure. Plus four Senders Bane. 427. Yeah, do you want to sleeve the extra claws that you may or may not use? Which I personally would not. So I will ignore it. You know, I'll add the eight for your guys' sake. 435. Oh, Charizard's foot's cutting it off a little bit. There we go. Yeah, this is, I can just move my calculator. There. Yeah, so there we go. Classes plus other thing, plus extra ascenders bane, plus claw pack. I guess it's eight cards so that everybody could add two claws if they were not every there's one defect. Never mind. I take it back. That's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> everybody gets claws. So is that the total consensus then? Prismatic shard, fair. So then 435 total possible but that's just like the character cards i mean do you need to sleeve the other stuff maybe not I, I don't actually know and that doesn't count any of the foils if you want to include those although i feel like then you're just doing a swap they're not in addition it's one or the other um, the golden tickets do those count is that part of that How many sleeves are on? Because it just says... This is 410. Okay, well, you know, do you give a minimum of 435 so there's one for everything? You combined all the different reward decks. Oh, golden tickets are included. Okay, hold on. Well, 
Okay, but my 435 here, that was the four characters, the 13 curses, 22 colorless, 10 days is 36 status, four ascenders made, eight claws. That's how we got to 435. So does that include That, that, like that that doesn't sound like you know reward decks not well oh yeah card reward screen okay I could just ignore them <laughs> I part of the reason I never picked the managers because their leaders are terrible so like they need to have a leader that I legitimately think he's a good leader while at the same time the other classes don't have one that's as good. Okay, starter plus normal plus rare. I mean, that's every day. It's always three terrible ones. Whereas snow and junk, you always have at least one playable guy. Actually, I take it back. I did have to take a five cooldown leader the other day. Um, that was before I unlocked the junk tribe, though. So I only had three options to pick from. He played a snow smack bag on me. Crazy, dude. Viper, would would you estimate in your mind then that those are the only cards that would be worth or necessary to sleeve? Because like there's still other cards that you're using during the course of the game. Where is my game? Um, obviously there's the foils. I feel like the foils, I would just do a swap. I wouldn't have that be separate. Um, geez, this box really is tight. I don't have anything sleeved yet. I think it's honestly easiest just to pick it up and let gravity pull it out as opposed to physically try and pull it off. Yeah, I'm just letting gravity drop it. That was easier. Okay. So let's put this back here. Let's put these back here. Woo, don't drop that one. The game isn't intended to be played with extra copies. Yeah, I wouldn't have extra copies. And I wouldn't even use the claw pack. But I'm, I'm including that number in there anyway, just because some people will, and you know, it's technically there. So, like, that's 438, otherwise 427. You know, foils or beta arts, like, I wouldn't sleeve those unless they were in the deck. And I wouldn't put them in the deck unless I was replacing the otherwise regular one. I wouldn't be adding those in in addition. So to me, that's all the same. The only other reason to want to sleeve them would be to sleeve them just so that way they're protected. It's not important because they're not used. They're going to be sitting in a box. It's fine. Um, although foil cards do tend to bend. So I could see maybe putting a sleeve on those. They might bend less. I don't know. Um, but no, I meant more like for the... Um, How to get thing out? There we go. Um, okay, those are curses. Yeah, so we have other stuff like, like the monster cards and like Act One cards. So like the events and the monsters and stuff. I feel like I would want to have all that stuff sleeve too, because like it's still out there, like physically on your table. They're getting shuffled. They're getting you know flipped over. You know, Doritos Fingers Mike is going to touch him. You may see how many extra sleeves you need for each set of add-ons. Only need one set of... Mike's next to me double sleeve. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. That was the, um... 
the sleeves for everything else and those were just clear those weren't the the backed or whatever whatever the term is for it those were clear because those don't matter as much about being flipped over and actually seeing the back is good right yeah yeah so that's what that one was so i definitely would want that i don't know why i didn't get that that seems silly to me the sleeves for everything else yeah for the rest of the game okay so then the art sleeves with the Slay the Spire background, those are bonus ones just to have extras. If there's rips, if you decide to sleeve multiple copies. So I probably would not need to do what Cooper did and get 200 of them. I probably would be fine with just getting one pack to have some extras. Honestly, if there was a pack of 50 for seven, Instead of 100 for 10, I could even consider that. No, I still would do the value. 50 for 6, I would be fine with. But 100 for 10? Nah. Unless you want to sleep in the beta on 4 packs. Or foil pack, 1 pack. Okay. Intended to be swapped out. Yep, that's exactly what I would do. <clears throat> You can also use the sleeves in other games. Absolutely, I would theoretically use it for Magic the Gathering if I ever went to another draft. You know, I would have 45 sleeves on the side. Um, but you would need it if a sleeve ripped or tear, tore. If they break from shuffle or use, if you have an exact amount, now you're now you're out, now you're screwed. Now you have a card that has no sleeve. You need to buy one sleeve. So I think having a pack of spare is completely fine. And this is not clear how many there are in here. I'm not about to count all of these either. If we assume, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like nine. It looks like there's nine packs of sleeves. If we assume they're all the same number and that they all hit at least 435. Oops. Are there 50? Ah, that makes sense, actually, if there's 50 in each pack. Because 48.3 would be enough to sleeve everything. And 50 in a pack just makes production sense. What about 427 divided by 9? 47? So there would have to be at least 48 to 49. Right? But if there's 50 in each pack, that already gives you 18 spares. Uh, no, this is 48.3. So it's not quite 18 spares, it'd be like 15? Yeah, it'd be 15 spares, which actually is probably fine. For stuff ripping, you'd have 15 backups. Would I want to spend another $10 to get extras? I mean, yeah, just in case. Theoretically, eventually, you might break more than 15 sleeves all the time, in theory. And then being able to use them for other games is fun. Okay. No, oh, yeah, that definitely helped. That definitely helped. Um, I don't care about sleeving the beta art, which four packs, that's 40 bucks for that? No way. Um, yeah, so Cooper, you're going to have quite a bit of extras, but there's nothing wrong with it. You would be able to fully sleeve the foils on separate if you wanted. And then you'd still have 100 sleeves left over. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that. So I'll get the sleeves for everything else. Get an extra set of art sleeves just because. I mean, it's $10, whatever. Get the table mat. 
I don't care about beta art. But if my brother doesn't have the beta art from me, I was pledged, then I would get it just to have it. Because he's a collector, so I would just let him have it. But I'm pretty sure he's got it. Where is he on here? Whoa, all caps. That's an interesting way to think about it. I didn't even think of that. Like, what if, yeah, you run the game as two ironclads? Granted, one of you guys is then going to have to have an entirely foil deck. But, like, whatever. Yeah, I mean, having that potentially up to, up to go is not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with it. Just not the way I'm personally going to use it. So. I should have just done the whole of the hours all the Am I really that against the beta art that I wanted to save $15 that hard? I guess if I'm spending $22 on sleeves and I'm not spending the $20 on the beta art, that's fine. Because yeah, if I have the 145 pledge, and then if I add in the extra the extra playmat and the extra sleeves on the side. I'm at 217 as opposed to Neo's All In of 210. So I'm spending $7 more getting my extra sleeves and I'm kicking out the beta, which I don't care about. To which, if I bought the Neo's All In to begin with, I would still have wanted to buy the extra sleeves. So I'd be at 232. So yeah, I saved $15 to not have a box of beta art that I don't care about sitting around. I saved 15 bucks. And I'm pretty sure brother's got that anyway, with the full thing. Which is fine and dandy. Give you a guide of how to put everything back in the box. Gloomhaven needed that. It's after midnight now. We've accomplished everything that we needed to accomplish on stream with this. 
I think it's time to uh, turn it all in. Viper, thank you so much for your help, man. It was super cool chatting with an expert and uh, getting extra tidbits of info of how things work. And obviously the fact that you made the mod for the board game version of the card game in the card game version. Something like that. I will definitely check that out this week, for sure. Um, super cool. So that's awesome. I'm really glad you showed up. Uh, Cooper, always good to see you, man. And uh, came in and everybody else who popped in. Granted, I'm sure people left hours ago, but whatever. If anyone's watching the vibe. Um, hell yeah, man. I mean, we technically could play it over cam. Like, you would get basically a, a camera view like this. Um, like Cake Man. Um, you know, maybe I could do something a little bit better with the webcam. Slightly. You know, it's got an extra angle like that. I don't know if that is more advantageous or less advantageous. Um, there's enough of a delay, I actually can't see. What am I looking for? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, this is not enough play area space. But maybe there's maybe there's something more that could be done. I don't know. But we could technically play it over a camera anyway. Like it is a board game. It's simplistic enough. Um, or just you know we check out Viper's mod and see how that works. We can co-op that two players one controller. But no, yeah, this looks super cool. I don't know when I'm gonna sleeve everything. It doesn't help when you work six days a week. And I'm not doing it tomorrow because I have other things I need to do tomorrow. Um, obviously, I'd still like to play it, but whatever. Oh, yeah, so had a ton of fun. Super cool, super stoked. It is everything that I hoped it would have been and more. Cooper, I'm sorry about the 247 plus tax and shipping that you just spent because of me. I apologize, but... <laughs> I'll treat you to a pizza. Give me some details, and I'll, I'll treat you to a pizza to make up for it. But uh, otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Some other time? I don't know. <laughs> it's my fault. Supporting Slave Spire 2 development. That's true. Slave Spire 2 is in development. I'm looking forward to it. I really hope it has co-op built in. I really hope so. That'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Early access next year, so then full launch will be like 2026, probably. But that's fine. So many indie games early access basically as if it's like their launch anyway. And then they, they work on completing things that were intended to be completed from the start, but they either didn't know how or they wanted more info on like the right way to complete them as opposed to just like oh whoops these are all wrong players broke the game now we patch it you know but it's fine as good as Baylor nah nah I mean we're we're both we're both pretty good we can both streak on Ascension 20 so not very high but we can string a couple. We can string a few. So, I mean, the only way you get better is if you're stringing together 10 games periodically, going for 20 games. That's just insane. They, they do things that I would never be able to do. But someone's gotta be good. Someone's gotta be good. Anyway, my throat's killing me. We'll catch you guys later. Thank you all for coming on out. Hopefully you have a good rest of your night, rest of your evening, rest of your week, whatever. And we'll chat with you soon. Peace. Groove into this car music right now.